Hey, uh, I got to tell you, Coke Logic is on the same page as us. Um, I, I want to give him the credit that he's starting a new bit, but actually it's kind of weird. Ant and I were, were talking about the exact same thing in the office before we got in here today. Yeah. He checked to see if we're, we were still on uh, WCKG in Chicago. Uh-huh. So it's a new bit. It's called ONA Road Call. Ro- roll call. Uh, uh, Road roll, call. Uh, sorry, roll call, right. I even... Road call. 57th Street. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yes, roll call. Um, because what happened a couple of weeks ago, we did a show assuming we were on in Detroit and Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and then we found out we felt like the biggest asses because this company decided to leave us in the dark, and we, yeah. we found out after the fact that uh, they took us off Detroit and Pittsburgh. They turned yeah. the Detroit station into an all-sports station, and Pittsburgh went to back to some stupid format that I guess worked back in the day. They changed the formats, and then, uh, you know. We don't fit anymore. And that was embarrassing because that day was the big Detroit Pittsburgh extravaganza show that we had promised for so long. I know we it was Maybe kind of embarrassing because that morning we were actually like giving Pittsburgh props, like, "Hey, we haven't talked to Pittsburgh in a while. What's up, Pittsburgh? How are you?" They weren't hearing, and, th- and they weren't hearing. No. So, so Coke Logic uh, on the instant feedback, he goes, "Yep, you're still on WCKG this morning." So we're going to do a uh, ONA uh, roll call. So we know we're still broadcasting on WCKG in Chicago. Yeah, and I, and I think the listeners could have fun with uh, betting which which uh, which freaking station is going to drop us next. Yep. So we want to hear from all the cities. Are we are we being heard on BCN right now? Are we being heard on YSP in Chicago? We we need a roll call. YSP in Philly. Uh, uh, I said Philly. Chicago. Yeah, uh, in Philly. West sorry. Palm. That stupid freaking fifth inning. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. If you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, yeah, West Palm. I mean, odds are, uh, uh, odds are that uh, we're going to be out in West Palm Beach or Chicago in the very near future. Yeah. But uh, don't count Philly out, man. I mean, they're, they're trying hard to get rid of this show. So they, they could be the one. They could, they, could, they could come from behind and be the next freaking station that drops the Opie and Anthony show. There's something really weird going on in Philly. We don't understand it. I talked to uh, somebody from corporate yesterday, and they're not saying that we're going to be gone, but they weren't saying that we're going to be around much longer. And I'm looking at the latest ratings. Uh, Preston and Steve still kicking our ass, but we're making some fine, fine movement. Yeah, in the it was uh, it was very nice, as a matter of fact. But yeah. uh, you know, a, a good sign is the fact they got a new PD that has decided not to communicate with us, even though he said he would. That that's never good. That's never good. And th- what happens in radio? You get a new PD, and they want to bring in all their own uh, people in there, so they can take you know complete credit for the success of a radio station. So something's yeah. going and they on. Have in Philly. more power over them. And we would that hate happens. to lose Philly. I'll be completely honest with you. We oh, do yeah. not want to go off YSP whatsoever. Some of these other stations, you know, it's part of the game. We understand when you syndicate a radio show, some are going to stick and some aren't. Yep, we understand that. That's why we don't get completely freaked out. But if we're if we're off the air in Boston or off the air in uh, Philly, that's really really going to be a bummer. Yeah, that's definitely a bummer, man. But, don't want that happening. But something's going on with YSP and the Opie and Anthony show. I, I I don't really feel the support I used to you know feel for uh, for 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 this show. And I don't know. I don't know. And we're we're kind of in the dark because no one's mm-hmm. really communicating with us down there. So I, I, I truly, I've been doing radio since I was 18. I truly believe they're looking to go in another direction. I really I believe that with all my heart, which is really frustrating because uh, Detroit, we had horrific ratings. It, it, the, the show never really took off in Detroit for whatever reason, okay? But Philly, we're showing some nice growth. So that'll, that'll be really tough yeah. to deal with if we're, if we're kicked off the air in uh, Philly. Yeah. Then we'll right. just have we're to find another good station. traction. You know? We oh, know yeah. we have a ton of listeners down there. We know. We sold close to 10,000 tickets for uh, Opie and Anthony Comedy Show. Let me tell you something. Preston and Steve are not selling 10,000 tickets for, for a Preston and Steve for Comedy anything. Show. I know for a fact we have more listeners in Philly than Preston and Steve. And people would, would, would say, what? Huh? What? But something that we don't really acknowledge much uh, on, on this side of the show, we have a massive audience on satellite in Philly and a, and a pretty good audience on YSP. Yep. You put the two together, it's not even close. But it doesn't work that way, unfortunately, because we're, we're working yeah. with two separate companies that don't want to really acknowledge the other one whatsoever. So. We're very, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of ahead of our time as far as that's concerned. They don't really look at, uh, 
uh, the, the two mediums and put it together and then realized how many people you're talking to. X7 and CBS, yeah, they don't, like to, they don't like to look at each other in the hall. They just kind of both walk no. by. Yeah. And I sat down with a sales guy and he said to me, well, maybe there's a way to, to take those extra listeners and, and get advertising dollars to more. <laughs> 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 and hit your head on the desk when you're not out. Well, no, no, but they've just raised that point, though. The yeah. bottom line is that, that people want more bang for their buck. If they're going to spend on, on, maybe if there's a way to incorporate both audiences mm. and get them all on the same page, that this way we could take like certain contests and just the advertising dollars could be better. <laughs> 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 All right, so well, good news. We're still on in uh, Chicago, but I guess Sean didn't hear that. Uh, Sean from Chicago, what's up? Yeah, just uh, letting y'all know you're still alive and good here. All right, uh, on WCKG? Yes. Oh, you might want to start figuring out another way to get the Opie and Anthony show in Chicago. I'm going to be honest with you. Can we be like the big... I've seen many different variations of the fresh logo for, 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 for oh, Chicago. Boy. Great. I want the big. I want to be like big-headed Rocky Dennis. Get us a map. Yeah, get us a map. And I want to pull pins out <laughs> as we lose markets until I go to sleep and suffocate yeah. on my big fat head. <laughs> All right, we're still on in uh, Chicago. See, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some uh, listeners uh, checking in from Chicago. All right, thank you, uh, Sean. Uh, uh, a check for Chicago, Brad Grand Rapids. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely on in the, the little old town of Grand Rapids, that's for sure. All right, WKLQ still has the Opie and Anthony show on. That's very good news. Good. We oh, we yeah, uh, we like the, we like Grand Rapids. Hey, here's uh, Philly checking in. Charlie, Philly, okay. listening on YSP. Okay. What's up? Hey, Opie, Anthony, Jimmy, what's up, boys? Hey. Hey, hey. hey I just want to let you guys know, still on in YSP, even though uh, Robin, uh, uh, oh, and they're getting kicked off of YSP. Kid Chris is taking her show. Is Howard reporting that too now? Oh, he reported it yesterday apparently, and Kid Chris played a little bit of that clip, and it pissed Chris off big time. Pissed him off because he don't want the morning slot. Uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, Kid Chris is a friend of ours as well, which is kind of strange because uh, you know he's also friends with Howard, but it just works where we are friends with Kid Chris. He wants mornings. Every radio yeah. guy wants mornings. I don't know why you'd want mornings. Well, especially if you're doing does, afternoons. Afternoons rule. Yeah, it's a nice... As far as the lifestyle goes. It is a nice uh, time slot. Oh, oh, here it is. Howard said that their old station, K Rock, is still in the toilet. He said that CBS fired Opie and Anthony years ago and then hired them back and put them on in the mornings. He said that uh, they're second to last in the morning ratings. That's so not effing true, but, you know, mm. Howard says what he wants, and then people believe it for whatever reason. By the way, no one heard this, Howard. Yeah, I guess exactly. We're doing you a favor today. You have to read it from somewhere. Howard said that those guys, I swear to God, I had no idea this was said, and he's talking about no. us. In the old days when Howard talked about us, I knew right away because people were actually hearing what he had to say. Yeah. But I had no idea Howard said this yesterday. No clue. I'm, I have to read it off a blog. Some blogger put this up, and then we're reading it on a blog, not because you know, because Howard broadcasted this to a ton of people and it got back to us. I heard even the people that were listening didn't hear it because they couldn't understand it with his dentures flapping around in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old Mr. Ed Teeth. <laughs> Howard said that those guys claim that they make more money for XM than he does for Sirius, but he finds that hard to believe. We oh, my God. You you want to play that card? Howard, you want to play that? We make way more money for XM than, First than you all, make for Sirius. They're, as far as the so salary goes, we make crap. No, I'm not even talking about that. We're way more profitable as a radio show on satellite radio yeah. than Howard. Do you want to argue that point, Howard? They're stuck with a $100 million contract every year, you it's, dope. It's kind of like what I was talking about. I was saying we make, like, crap compared to what Howard makes. So if you take what Howard makes and what we make, uh, we we could be losing money for the uh, company, which we're not. We're making money for them. Right. We could be losing money and still be outperforming him financially uh, because they're paying him so much money. It's a, I, so don't even don't even try. It's amazing that he just spews his crap and people believe him. It, it's not even close. We're a much better deal for XM than Howard is for Sirius. One of the main reasons they have to freaking merge. 
the business plan yeah. is, is is a train wreck because they're paying him a hundred million dollars a year. Oh, trust me, we want that contract, and every guy in radio does. And God, who wouldn't? God bless him for getting it. But to say that. Howard said that those guys claim that they make more money for XM than he does for Sirius. That is absolutely a fact. Yeah, it is. An absolute fact if you if, uh, factor in everything. Our contract's nowhere near his. No disputing that. That $100 million a year is killing the company in the end. And then he uh, continues, they don't get any listeners and they don't have any ratings on regular radio. Howard said that Z100 is the top morning show and Opie and Anthony have been taken off a bunch of his old stations. Uh, true. Uh, when Howard was in syndication, he was taking off a bunch of stations. It's just the nature of freaking syndication. But every time he lost a station, he didn't acknowledge it, which maybe is smart business. I don't know. We like to try to like you know tell it like it is here, which might be dumb on our part. I don't know. Uh, they may be uh, taking them off in Philly so they could put Kid Chris on in the mornings there because he's uh, actually got ratings. Yeah, Kid Chris got ratings, and so do we. And they're very comparable, by the way. Mm-hmm. Our ratings and Kid Chris's ratings on YSP are very comparable. Yeah. Oh, he's such a douche. He's trying the old divide and conquer thing, but no one's listening to divide. Uh, all right. Uh, we have to take a break. Oh, late. yeah. But Andrea from uh, Pennsylvania. What's up, Andrea? Hi. Hey. I am a new listener. I love you guys. Thank you. Um, I listen on YSP for half my trip because I listen to K-Rock on the other half, but I'm totally bummed out that, that you guys might not be on the station anymore. Well, I like oh, walk in the morning. I I had a long conversation with someone from corporate yesterday, and it's not looking good. They didn't say that we are getting kicked off, but they weren't willing to commit that we're going to continue, you know, in the new year. So I don't know where it's at. I know the PD has decided not to communicate with us. I know we had a really nice dinner with David, the GM down there, but I guess that was just uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I don't, I don't know, know what, what that was. If you don't hear from somebody, then you just don't know. Yeah. So, so I don't know. And there's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of buzz, and uh, it's not looking good. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's frustrating oh, because our bad. ratings are going up month after month down there. So uh, uh, we have a long ways to. Very sad. All right. I mean, the the problem is Preston and Steve has a they have a massive lead, and we're moving up, but uh, I guess we're not moving up fast enough for their taste. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Uh, let's go to Tim in Tucson. Tim, what's up, buddy? Not much, man. Can you hear us? We, we lost you. We, yeah, we lost you guys for a while out here. What do you mean? They're, uh, they delayed. They had you on delay from six to nine, but then uh, over the summer they lost you. Uh, they took you off, I think, and then they finally moved you to three to six. <laughs> Tucson, Arizona. We were on there. <laughs> Are we still on in Tucson, Arizona? Yes. Okay, good news. So we should say good afternoon to them? We should say... I think we should say hello, Tucson. I had no idea we were on in Tucson. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't that where Imus was listening to the show? Yeah. When he was out there? Yeah. All right. Actually, that's the station Imus, I believe, listens on. Yeah. All right, thank you, Tim. We're still on in Tucson. Vanessa in Maine, what's up? Hey, I just want to let you guys know you're still on in Maine. Still on in... uh, Huh? They did a reformat on 93.9 a couple months ago, but they kept you guys, and I, I don't know what they play on the station. Hey, look at that. You guys, but... And we got two stations in Portland, Maine, we're still on. Two? Yeah. This show's so great, we, we, we're we the morning show for two stations. Who cares about Philly and Boston? If we got two in Maine and New York, that's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to Chris in Connecticut. Chris, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Uh, first, I used to listen to you on XM, and unfortunately, I couldn't afford it anymore. Yeah. So uh, I started searching around the channels one day, and I found 99.7. I think it's a Boston station, and I'm in, like, south, southeast Connecticut, and I pick up you guys. So I, I, I love it now that, um, you know, like I said, I couldn't afford XM. So. Uh, 99.7 is uh, Providence. So we're still on oh, in Providence. Providence. Yeah, very, okay. yeah. Those guys in Providence okay. are really, really cool. We met them at one of the virus shows. They were really motivated yes. about the show. So, hey, all right. all right, thank you, sir. All right, we'll uh, we'll keep taking the uh, roll call uh, calls. Uh, Ian in Chicago, what's up? Hey, what's up, Bonnie? Hey, man. Hey, Ian. I don't think you guys are going anywhere from CKG. Ha, 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 ha. 
That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. That, that's terrible. I'm sorry. Oh, did you see that jerk? <laughs> oh, 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 really, yeah. Ian? I hope you're not a betting man. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, hello, exactly. Really? Why do you think that, uh, Ian? Because CKG is like a classic rock thing, and if they put fresh on, there would be like there would be chaos here in Chicago. It, what, what do you mean chaos? What kind of chaos would there be in Chicago? Yeah. Chaos. Would people take to the streets? I, I don't know about all that. Probably about as much as there is since Al Sharpton showed up to town. Uh, I think chaos. there was, Well, when Al Sharpton came to town, I think he had 12 people. So yeah. 12 people is chaos. Really? Al Sharpton could really rally the troop. Yeah. All right, Ian. Well, I, I hope you're right uh, there. You don't think we're going anywhere in Chicago, right? I hope not. I, I think there's a. I think uh, it took a while for Howard to get on here, and I think it's taking the same time. You know. <laughs> Ian, I hope you're right. All right, thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just make a game out of this because uh, it's either going to be West Palm Beach or Chicago next. I, th I honestly think it's going to be Chicago that we uh, lose before West Palm Beach. And, and we thought we were losing West Palm Beach a, a year ago. But they're still searching for their uh, next morning show, so we're just a placeholder. Does anybody remember last day? That makes you feel good <laughs> yes. when you're doing radio that you're just a placeholder until they find another morning show. Yeah. From some uh, some city you've never heard of before. Uh, let's say hi to Tom in Philly. Tom, what's up? Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, there, Tom. In Philly. Hey, thanks, Tom. Don't go anywhere. and. Uh... I just, I just love listening to you guys in the morning. Do not leave us in Philly, please. It's not up to us. For something is amiss. Something and, uh, is, have, something is going on at YSB, yeah. and I, I, we're pretty much out of the loop, which is really frustrating. Really frustrating because we know it. We know we got an audience down there. We have no doubt in our minds. We love you guys in Philly. Tear those pigs up today after seven, would you? All right, thank you, sir. Uh, let's go to Matt in Pennsylvania. Matt, what's up? Hey, you're still on the edge in Buffalo. Okay, we're doing roll hey, call. That's yeah. good to know. Hey, Buffalo, what's up? We're still recovering from the big uh, virus tour this summer, but, you know, we're... Hey, man, that wasn't still... our fault. We wanted to go to Buffalo with the That's comedy right. show, but uh, for some reason it didn't work out. We figured we'd get uh, a little action from Rochester, a yep. little action from Toronto, and uh, and a little action from Cleveland. We thought Buffalo would have been perfect this summer. This is like yeah, war games when they thought the nukes went off yeah. and got the calls from the various cities. We're, we're still here, sir. <laughs> we're still here. Oh. Oh, uh, hello, Joshua. Joshua. All, right. Joshua. All right, thank you. We're stupid computer learns and, and teaches them a lesson. How stupid! And don't forget to wear condoms. Right, we got it. Thank God for Joshua. <laughs> Joshua rules. All right, we'll make this really fast. Chris in Syracuse. What's up, Chris? Hey, Hey. just wanted to tell you that you're still on over here in Syracuse. Yeah, I think we'll be on in Syracuse for a while. Uh, Syracuse really digging the show, and they get the show, and they're working the show, and that's all we want from uh, from the local people. Yeah. Just get the show and, 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 and have some passion and work it as much as possible. Thank oh, you, yeah. Chris. Let's say hi to Ryan in Chicago. Uh, we already took care of the nice. Chicago situation. What's up, Ryan? No, Steve, check it out, but I haven't heard anybody call from West Palm Beach yet. What's going on with that? Mm. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone either, man. That's you know, true. Man, is is today the day they got here, rid of... Bud. Oh, you keep talking. <laughs> you know what it is? Yeah, no, well, check it out, but I've, I've been listening to you guys for quite some time. I used to live up in Maine. I listened to you guys for a long time on uh, 93.9. Hey, yeah, yeah. We're back. I'm back in Chicago now. I'm a house DJ. I come home every morning. I just throw your show on. I basically pass out to it. You guys are funny as hell. Thank you. And I'll be listening to you guys for as long as you guys are on the uh, on the air here. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Sorry. Tim in Cleveland, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? I'm calling from the future. You guys are still on in Cleveland. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> from the future. Good afternoon, Cleveland. All righty. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, okay. Cleveland, another you know station that works the show and gets it and has a uh, has a uh, has a bit of passion. Should ask when him who won the World Series. Show. Damn it! Well, no, they, they play the tomorrow. 
Uh, oh, he's only in the future, though. He's only like eight eight hours ahead. Oh, nine hours oh, ahead, okay. something like that. that. That is barely. You future. need to find a future guy that's a few days ahead, and then you can see what happens. Yeah. Tonight. All right. Eight hours. Anyone can hey, do that. Hey, Scott, West Palm Beach. What's up? Give us the good news. Hey, buddy, we're, we got lots of passion for you down here. And are we on the radio this morning? Absolutely you are. In fact, we have so much passion down here, some of it's running down my leg right now. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> too bad Iggy's uh, not there. <laughs> all right, thank you, sir. Iggy good news. Iggy. Uh, Iggy. Good news. As of today, we're still on Making in duties. West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Iggy dropping little pellets all over little the rug. Duties. I got to uh, communicate from why In the shuttle. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes. Somebody from uh, inside the walls. I don't know. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. I'm usually pretty good at this stuff. I don't know if the guy's uh, joking or if he's serious. Yeah. I have no idea. I okay. swear to God. If you weren't listening earlier, there's uh, there's uh, strong rumors that uh, they might be thinking about making a change in uh, Philly and taking us off the air at YSP. And we're so, doing good over there. With the latest people, what happened? The latest whatever ratings. Uh, yeah. We did good. We're moving up. Yeah. We still have a ways to go to catch Preston and Steve, but we, we are convinced that we can take them. Yeah. But uh, so this guy uh, from inside the walls, and I really don't know if he's joking. We discussed the whole Philly thing earlier, so that's why we say linger longer, please. Yeah. Be uh, he writes, Ope, as your hugest fan in Philly, it is sad to see you guys being hustled out the door in spite of gaining momentum with the newfangled uh, ratings. Let's yeah. just say that. But like you say, there is some agenda down here that even we don't know about. I think I'm allowed to share your success in the ratings, but you never know. If you don't hear from me again, I have been killed by agents of Kid Chris. <laughs> to the untrained eye, it sure looks like Rock is killing your show and kids. Hmm. What does that mean? Like, the last part, obviously, was like, he's joking. Hmm. Yeah. But is there stuff in there that's true? <sighs> I'm telling you, this is what's, like, keeping me up at night. Like, what the F is going on in Philly? I have no idea. I just, uh, uh, there's no communication with the people down there. All right. Except cryptic messages. That's a cryptic message. Yeah. All right. Uh, John in Philly, what's up? Yo. Uh, good morning, guys. Hey, John. Um, Jimmy, you killed Saturday night, too, by the way. Thank um, you. I just wanted to comment Murderer. on, I'm from Philly, I listen every morning, uh, I got like an hour long commute in the morning, and if you guys get canceled down here and I have to listen to Preston and Steve every morning, I'm going to kill myself. You won't have to listen to Preston and Steve. If we get canceled, just grab XM. Or, or could you kill yourself before they officially take us off, because that could help the ratings. Well, that, that would kind of be good, yeah. You could sacrifice yourself for the good of the show, that would be kind of cool. I suppose I could do that. All right. Thank you, John. All right, guys. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to just tell the people, you know, pick up an XM. I want to succeed on F and YSP. So do I, but All if, right? we're off, if we're off, I'm not going to sit here casually going, ah, well, just listen to us on XM. No, I want to succeed yeah. on YSP. We're heading in the right direction. Well, that makes it sound like I'm saying that casually. I'm not. I'm just saying Yes, you no, I, I heard you say that, Jimmy. But if it happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. If it happens, I, you know, we're, there's going to be a lot of outrage. And then we try to find, uh, well, we'll. I'm outraged. We'll, we'll, we'll say that for Bob. I just hate to start over again somewhere else. Uh, let's go to Melanie in West Palm Beach, Florida. Melanie, what's up? Hey, how you doing this morning? Good, Melanie. What do you got? Uh, I was just calling to represent. I heard you, uh, Chicago or someplace said you haven't heard from West Palm. Well, here I am calling. Tried to call earlier, but in my morning drive, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in the contest that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, we'll do a uh, roll oh. call again tomorrow to see what stations uh, are sticking with us. Yeah, That's good news from West Palm Beach. We're on uh, this morning, West Palm Beach, Florida, Marsha, in Detroit. Hey, hey, hi guys, how you doing? Pretty Hello. good. What's up? I'm sorry, Detroit is so lame, and I have to listen to you on my computer now. Yeah, we uh, we got kicked off of Detroit, and the stupid company decided, ah, we didn't need to know, which yeah. still, still know pisses me right the F off. It's the way it works. It's like the mafia. Well, I'm you moving know, back to New York in December, so... They just I whack you. I love how corporate people. doesn't give a crap that people might actually be listening to a show, and they're getting yeah. into a show, and they, they feel a connection with the show. It's like, ah, done with that variety. We're moving on, and we're not telling anyone that uh, they're losing a show they actually like. 
And then the the ratings came out for Detroit. <laughs> Had a nice bump up. Yeah. Really? It doesn't matter anymore, though. They're like all when, sports. It's like when Henry Hill's backing out of his driveway. Right. In his car. It's like, if that would have been a corporate executive, we'd have been off a station already. <laughs> exactly what it's like, man. You just you don't see it coming. It just happens. There was yeah. a little bump up in Detroit. Yeah, a little bit. I yeah, mean, it, you know, it, mm. we were doing a thirty share. And, well, it's a little bump. <laughs> in one of the demos, we were moving uh, in the right direction. Yep. But what are you gonna do, Marsha? This business completely sucks. Uh, you know, I'll be out of it hopefully sooner than later because I can't stand this crap anymore. Where are you going? What are you doing? doing? I'm moving back to New York, so. All right. God oh. bless you, Marshall. Wow, well, she does like the show. But there's, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> right. There's, there's no loyalty. There's no uh, There's no men left in radio. Whoa, there, wait a minute. There really you got in this. You got in this for the men? <laughs> <laughs> you guys get into radio for chicks. For the, son. Most most guys get in into it for the chicks at free CDs. <laughs> There's no men. Now, behind the scenes, uh, for the most part, there's a few, because I'm sure Tom will run in and go, I'm a man. I get it, Tom. You need your attention. <laughs> uh, but there's, uh, for the most part, there's no real men left in this business. They're a bunch of cowards. They, they don't know what it means to be a man, so they hide. They don't call you. They don't give you any a clue on what's going on. Yeah. Of course I'm talking about Philly. <laughs> And of course I'm talking. And and of course I'm talking about the PD who said, you know, a fan of the show. We're going to be in contact. He's going to be sending lots of emails. He's psyched to work uh, with us. He's a good friend of Tim Sabian, and he knows he's how busy over how there, Tim maybe. worked the Opie and Anthony show in Philly. He's not a man. He's hiding. Maybe he's busy. I made it perfectly clear that we would like to talk to the guy, and he's still hiding. There's no man left in radio. You haven't gotten an email or a phone call of yet. Of course not. And let me tell you something. Neither am I. Let me tell you something about Philly. If 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 they think they know what they're doing, oh, I got a doozy for Philly. Oh, have Dan Gross on standby for a fine little interview and a, and a fine little uh, idea I got. Oh, oh, do I got a doozy if they think they know what they're doing in Philly? Oh, do I have a doozy? I love threats. I like. It's not even a threat. It's not. It's a promise. It's not even a threat. I don't know what it is. It's not even a threat. Can I prove what a longtime listener I am? I will prove that we have a huge audience in Philly. It's not even a threat. Okay. I I remember the 55-gallon drum challenge. Yep. Thank you, Marsha. You're welcome. But seriously, there's no men left in this business. They're all a bunch of cowards. They don't know what what it means to be a man. Oh, no, they stand around. They hold up break signs every so often. Yep. They don't know. <laughs> it's my job. I, think this is fun. <laughs> I would think so. You get to make colorful signs every day. You get to try your arts and crafts. Why wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> arts and crafts. Right. <laughs> Sit across. Let's Sit- see his budget. Paper Sharpie. That's right. So, I bet you he has a little checklist of things he needs to walk in studio, and he'll check Sharpie. Where's the paper? Oh, I just checked on it. Here it is. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Than needs is is his his marker, his paper, and sociopathic hatred of the mother figure. <laughs> of mother, <laughs> of mother. <laughs> but you know, just to finish off, finish up today's rant. Uh, you know, you sit across like conference tables uh, from these guys that kiss your ass and say you're the future, blah blah blah, and then they turn around and completely blow you off and cut off all communication. That is not being a man. Yeah, that's being a you know what. You know, mm, wow. Let you me know. think. There's a couple of words. You know, I just wish bad. people you know. would be more honest. I would say that I agree with you about that. I wish people would just be a little bit more upfront and, this is, and just say what's on their mind yeah. without and, being aggressive or confrontational. Just say what's on their mind. And this is uh, this is uh, what I tell corporate. I don't hide. You know, it gets me in trouble all the time speaking my stupid mind. Maybe I should shut up. But uh, I, I tell corporate like it, it, it's not like you have some you know uh, just some hack show that that. That's not working, and then you get rid of them, never talk to them again. We're still a huge part of this company, and they treat you like that. They take you off stations without telling you, and all of a sudden, like, uh, Pittsburgh and Detroit calls like, hey, what happened to you? And like, what do you mean what happened to us? And then we have to find out from our listeners on the air that uh, we're, we're not even broadcasting in their city anymore. Keeps it exciting. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but it really is like being married, and you come home, and you get naked, you jump on the bed, and you land on pillows, and you're like, oh, I thought my woman was here. What happened? No, she just left. No explanation, no nothing. Right. She flipped formats. Now she's playing urban. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this, is a, this is a great radio show. It'll always be a great radio show, and we will always have an audience for this effing radio show. And boy, do I have a doozy for Philly. 
<laughs> Can't wait for you to play your card because I got a fine hand waiting oh. to be played. Oh, boy. <laughs> God, this guy just doesn't listen. Mike and Philly, really fast because we got a real busy show today. Go. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, like, Mike. I mean, you guys are trying to get out of Philly, man. I mean, that's, that's kind of not cool, dude. I mean, there's nothing else going on down here on the radio. Preston and Steve are crap. Uh, like we're, you guys can't leave, you can't leave Philly, man. Just don't do it. it it's, it's, uh, it's not up to us. It's up to YSP and this company we work, work for. We're not trying to get out of Philly. We no. want to continue in Philly. We want to continue on YSP. We have a huge, uh, a long history with YSP. We, uh, we think Preston and Steve suck. We really do. It's not even a jealousy thing. I mean, uh, no one understands why they got such huge ratings. I, I'm sorry, but it's not mm -hmm. it's not a show that that should have as 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 big of an audience as they have, and it's simple as that. And it, and it, and it's and it's and it's, it's stupefying everybody because it's really just hacky. Who gives a crap? Radio, you know. I mean, I'll give Howard his props when Howard was huge in Philly, getting massive numbers. Yeah, you listen, you go, yeah, okay, I get it. This is why it does, a lot of people are listening to this show, it, you know? Yeah. But Preston and Steve, it's it sucks. But for some reason, that's what Philly likes right now. And we're trying to turn that around slowly but surely here. <laughs> He's just talking. I can't tell you why people like it, man. It's just it's the, they're glorified interns. I don't even know what the heck to call them. They're just they're crap. Right, but I'll tell you this much. You know, if YSP, if they get stupid and get rid of us, uh, I trust me, I got a doozy waiting for them. A doozy. I hope, I'm around, I hope, I hope you guys are around so I can hear it, man. All right, and I, I, I hope it doesn't come down to that, I'll be honest. But uh, if it does, so be it. So be it. All right, Mike, thank you. Hey, Ant. Hey, Ant. Yeah, right. Click. Mike? He was, yeah, he was he's trying, trying to get again. Me. All right, well. I knew, I knew it. I saw it coming, so it didn't work. Hardy har. Let's go to Hank at Philly. Uh, Hank, what's up? Yo, O.A. and Jimmy. Hey, yes. Francis. Ooh. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, you're still on in Philly. Oh, okay. That's good to know because there were rumors that uh, today was uh, D-Day, that they were taking us off today. They, oh, boy. There were rumors uh, uh, flying around uh, the old internet on the old radio uh, sites. I, I haven't heard none. And uh, 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 Anthony, you're the Mets fan, right? Yeah, that yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I hope attention. we get rid of Randolph and bring in Tory. All right, it would be so much better. Wait, you're in Philly, but you're a Mets fan. That's a little weird. Yeah, my I'm the first one in my family not born in New York. Yeah. Oh, all right, Hank. Uh, yeah. Hank, I might uh, make a little visit to Philly in the very near future. All right, cool. I, I met you guys backstage at the Camden tour. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, I, di I didn't do nothing that outrageous for you guys, but uh, I asked Jimmy Norton if I could pee on his leg. Oh, well, that, that's just wonderful, Hank. I was drunk. Are you drunk now? No, I got to go to work. All right. Good Hank. luck, Hank. Thanks. Hank, listening on WYSP. Can we, can we come back Philly. at one point? Oh, by the way, I wanted to get local for Philly. Uh, John yep. Belair is coming back to town, guys. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Belarus is coming back to Philly. That's that's big news for Philly. Wow. All right, hey, it's Opie and Anthony. Don't forget, we got $1,000 to give away. Uh, he's a weatherman. Okay. He was massively huge in Philly, and then New York grabbed him. You've seen John Belarus on, on New York weather. I uh, I huge. phase out everybody's name on, on Honestly, as far local as, news because it's not news. But uh, Yeah, we'll get into that a little oh, bit we after have the break. To. But. As far as weather guys go, he he stands out. This guy John Belarus always stood out. Yeah, he is smooth when he's doing his uh, weather forecast. Absolutely. Somebody's saying, yeah, Belarus uh, is Opie's idol. Hide your teenage daughters. What, what does that mean? He's not my idol. I'm just going local for Philly. I don't know. People people are saying Belarus is one of the biggest names in <laughs> in, in Philly media history. This guy. Yeah. And then New York stole him for a while, and now he's going back to Philly. It's big news. Trust me. Trust me. In Philly, they're like, wow. Goodness this, gracious. This is good for our city. Want to say hi to Buffalo? Yeah. Holy yes. Hello, Buffalo. Hello, we Shred and Reagan. Love Buffalo. My old friend Shred. Yep. Just destroying an afternoon drive in Buffalo, and uh, we're doing, uh, I wouldn't call it destroying, but we're number one in a bunch of demos that we need to be number one in. Huge ratings in Buffalo. Thank you, Buffalo. Thank you. Absolutely. And Jim Norton was on in uh, Buffalo yesterday on Shred and Reagan. How did that go? Shred and Reagan. It was great. I mean, those guys always do a really good interview, and they, uh, you know, they were they saying nice things about this show, and then they made fun of me for my awful plug yesterday, and they were right. Yeah. You guys were talking about the show. You mentioned Shred Reagan, and I just kind of like shamefully mumbled like, yeah, I'm going to be on with her. 
I never. Oh. I, I, didn't, I was so afraid of saying that, and people go, well, "We're not talking about you. <laughs> we're talking about Shred Reagan, not you." But uh, it was great. Those guys are helping me out. And, uh, <laughs> we're just doing great in Buffalo. Yeah. They got a young PD, this guy Jim, and yeah. uh, he just. I, I and I try to tell the other affiliates, and we had an article recently. When you take the Opie and Anthony show, this is a really, really good radio show. But if you're an affiliate and you're taking the morning show, you you, you can't just turn the switch on and go, ah, I don't have to worry about mornings. You got to work it. You got to make it sound like it's part of uh, the city that uh, your station is in. Yeah. And this guy, Jim, he's young. He's aggressive. He knows how to work the show and make it sound like we're broadcasting right there in Buffalo. He's a go-getter. And then there's other, uh, there's other stations we're on. They just flip the switch and go, ah, that's all I have to do. And they're not getting the same results as Buffalo. You got to work it a little bit. Got to work it a little bit. Yeah, it's not just like you know, pipe it in. Right. I mean, we'll do most of the work. Get, trust me. But the, but you got to do some stuff too. You got to come oh, up with babe. some clever promos. You got to come up with some clever contesting. You gotta you gotta send us info from your city so uh, so we could uh, you know bring that to everybody yeah, and make talk it, about it and make it interesting for the whole country. Yep. You know it, you, the, the 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 PDs that just turn the switch on. They're just dummies. They really are dummies. Yeah. <sighs> we haven't been above End of today's years. rant. I know. Well, we were supposed to be this summer. I was pushing hard for the virus virus tour to hit Buffalo. I just know it's a it's a hotbed for Opie and Anthony activity. <laughs> 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 it really is though. And then you got, you know, we do pretty well in Rochester and then, you know, because of the XM, we got a lot of Canadian listeners. It would have been a perfect place. Then you got the people from Cleveland that could come up and check out the show, you know, the Pittsburgh. Hard, some of the hardcore people from Cleveland and Pittsburgh would have went to Buffalo. It, it was it was a guarantee to sell a lot of tickets, but uh eh, we're not going to get it right every time, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, good morning to everybody. Especially Philly. Good morning. It's just about over in Philly. Although, who knows? Never never hear from the guy. No, it's over as far as WISP goes. Yeah. Our radio careers in Philly, far from over. But we ain't taking their crap too much longer. This is a very, very good radio show. An extremely good radio show that'll always find a home. We're just about done with WISP. Personally, I, I can't speak for the rest of the guys. I don't want to be on YSP anymore. I don't think they get it. I think the station's a complete disaster. And I believe it's time to move on and find a company that's uh, willing to take the show and work it the, the way it should be worked. This is a fine radio show. And I'm not going to sit there and be treated like crap. I certainly would have liked to have heard from uh, the uh, people in charge. I love Philly. I love the people of Philly. I love doing radio. I love doing radio for Philly. I just don't love YSP. I want the guy to pick up the phone. We're on a lot of radio stations for CBS, and it's uh, no way to treat us. Simple as that. I could understand if it was like an independent company with one lousy station that we were on. Then I would sort of get it. But we're a big part of this uh, radio company, and they're treating us like crap. And we sit here and take it. I don't. I don't need them. We don't need them. And I'm sure we can find another home in Philly. Might take a little while, but I'm willing to take the chance. YSP is a disaster. I don't know why the uh, and all we asked was uh, giving us a call. All we asked was for the PD to call us. He said he was going to call us. He said he was going to keep in touch with us. I don't think he likes us. Well, then say it. Then say it. Stop being a, a little. You know. Uh, you know what? We can't say half the words. I want to call him. Wussy boy. Be a man and tell us what's going on. Nothing. Or, or, said he was going to. Said he was going to call. Don't come up to New York and sit across the table from us and say how great we are and you're big fans and looking forward to working with us and all this stuff. And then uh, and then what? And then you go away and, never, and we never hear from you? Yeah. That's not a man. That's a wussy boy. John Cook's a wussy boy. This is a very good radio show. And we'll do just fine uh, working for somebody else in Philly. I, I like I have it. no doubt in my mind. And don't com don't be confused. We love Philly. I go down there all the time. The show goes down there all the time. Yeah. You know, don't be confused. I don't love YSP anymore, and most people don't at this point. 
The place is a freaking disaster. Thank you, Sean. See, we get nothing but calls from Philly, it seems, every morning. Sean, what's up? Yo, what's up, guys? Listen, I've been listening to you guys for the last six, seven years, straight out of YSP, you know, and I'll give them that because they, they turned me on to you guys, but when you guys went on hiatus, I, I was like, I, I was so happy that you went to XM. Picked up the XM, I've been listening to that ever since. So screw, screw YSP. I mean, listen, is as fair weather as everyone else in Philly, and your true fans are with you no matter what, and uh, I just want to say thanks. I listen to you guys every morning going into work. I de decompose on the way home from work, and it's just, you guys are the best. I just uh, want to say thanks. I appreciate it. And we got we got a doozy for uh, YSP when this all finally, uh, it, you know, goes down. And this is me talking. I'm not talking for Ann. I'm not talking for Jimmy. You know, I, I have a problem uh, running my mouth, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I, a, oh, I don't know what's going to happen in Philly. I don't know if they want us anymore. Well, screw with YSP. F them in their F, you know what. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Some, someone gave me a note, want to try to get uh, Cook on the phone. He, he's already decided he doesn't want to talk to us. After he came all the way up to New York with the GM and sat across the table from us, said they're going back to rock, said that, we, that we're a huge part of the whole thing, that we're going to be their anchor, their morning show, can't wait. This is going to be exciting. This is going to be for you, good for you guys. John Cook's sitting there going, I'm going to send you guys so many emails. You're going to call me and go, please stop. Just please stop. And I'm like, no, that's exactly what we want. Maybe someone called him and he thought it was us and said, please stop. Right. And he just stopped completely. You know, we uh, we have a, a, a very good relationship with all the PDs uh, from not all, but most of them. I mean, West Palm Beach is a very similar situation. They they don't want to, you know, they don't want to show and they don't want to communicate with us. But that's been, that's been going on for over a year. Oh, my year. God, yeah. I, I'm amazed we're still on in West Palm Beach. I think it's hysterical. But you know what? <laughs> I, I respect the guy in West Palm Beach. I really do, and I'll tell you why. He made his intentions known from day one. When we when we started talking to all the PDs and they like uh, came back with all their research about the Opie and Anthony show in their in uh, their market, it was nothing but positive except for West Palm Beach. He 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 wasn't digging the show, didn't want the show, and made it very obvious from day one. I respect that, believe it or not. At least we know where we're where we're at. Yeah. I don't respect guys that sit across the table from you and look you right in the eyes and say that they're big fans and uh, you know uh, looking forward to working with you and you're the anchor of the of YSP when we bring the rock back and all that lying right to our face obviously because we went down there a mere what uh, three four days later we were there for two days and then never heard from the people again. I don't respect that whatsoever. I think that's a that's a wussy boy. Like rings of phoniness. That's a wussy boy. That's not a man. So I do respect the West Palm Beach guy, believe it or not. You know, it's unfortunate he doesn't want to work the show or anything, but he, he basically told us from day one, look, company forced us to take the show. We don't want the show. We want to kind of have our own thing going down here. We want, our, we want a local show. I respect that. Because At least I knew where the guy was standing. One. When we went down there, he, he made it perfectly obvious that he was doing the basics like, oh, you're here. Well, here's some coffee and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> do, do the show. You know, we'll give you a, like a dressing room at the big uh, concert we're doing down here. But look, you know, you know what's going on. I know what's going on. Yeah. I respect that, believe it or not, in my life. You know, I, I don't respect people that lie right to your face. And I'm not going to sit here and like, like wonder because it's, it's a major distracting uh, distraction. You know, I'm speaking for myself. YSP, YSP, the people running it right now, it blows. It well, blows. I just, it just makes me sad because it was such a big part of, you know, the whole syndication thing. And I'm talking the old days. Yeah. With the Philly. Well, the people that really believed in the show have moved on. And, and you know, they proved that this show is just, uh, just, is just, it was told to us actually at the roast. Tim Sabian came by and said hi to us. He goes, this, you know, CBS doesn't understand that your show is lightning in a bottle. Obviously, Tim Sabian, where there's lightning in the bottle, things a little. Ugh. Yeah. But you know, the point the point is made though. He's a douche in trousers. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, the new people at uh, YSP and and some of the people in the company, they don't understand what they got with your show. They don't understand that you can't just pull, you know, push a switch in the morning, turn on the syndicated morning show, and that's it. You got to work it. You got to make it part of your. Your station, you got to make it part of your uh, your city. Yeah, it's got to be promoted. We're not, I'm not, not talking about billboards and things like that. It's just making it an integral part of the station through uh, uh, on-air promos, things like that.
Dude, got to work it. Back in the day, YSP, they got in our face all the time to the point a lot of people in Philly really believe that we were broadcasting live from Philly. Remember, they yeah. would just come up with cheesesteaks out of nowhere, like just to get the attention. They knew how to work the show, you know? What about some, um, like, production? When was the last time we went into the studio and read, like, hey, Soapy and Anthony? We do production YSP. for almost every other station that we're on. Yeah. Almost every other station. You know, we don't get asked by YSP. We don't get uh, we we don't get um, copy sent over here that says, "Hey guys, do uh, a few things for uh, for the station." Right. Nothing. Well, there you go. So I want to make it perfectly clear: we love Philly. We love doing perfectly radio in Philly. Clear. I I don't like YSP. I don't like how they've uh, treated us, especially knowing that uh, we're a huge part of this radio company. We're on in a lot of cities, and to be treated like this by the local guys in Philly is just just wrong. And they're not men. They're not men whatsoever. You know? You cannot truly be a man. Well, that's the way it is with corporate people. They don't they just say one thing and then they just kind of hide until it just goes away. And then well, you know, it. that's that's fine, but I'm not gonna sit here and take it. We we'll find another radio station, we'll find another company. There's other radio companies out there too. You know, I'm not gonna give up. You're right, Jimmy, but I'm not giving up on that crap. I wanna find a station that gets the show. Knows how to work the show. I want to find a you know a company that will help us out a little bit more in the end as well. You know, Philly. Let's go to Alex. Alex, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey, little Jimmy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, man, I can't believe you guys are going off in Philly. Is that is that like uh, set or what? I think it's set. You know, but the, these these wussy boys down there. You know, one day they'll will just not be on, and that's how they're going to handle it. Really? Yeah. Well, you still haven't talked to the PD, have you? No, no, I haven't talked to him since we since the virus show. Mm. When was that? That was early September, wasn't it? Yeah. Gone back. And he said he was going to call. That's the weird thing. He said he was going to call, and he's just hiding like a little wussy boy. This John Cook. Yeah. Little wussy boy. You you sat right across from us up here in New York, you wussy boy. <laughs> if you didn't really? if you didn't want the show, you had an opportunity. You were right in front of us, right in front of us. I I, don't, I personally don't want to listen to Preston and Steve. <sighs> well, well, they're horrible. I'll, I'll probably just I'll probably just drive to work with my radio off. Well, they're you know That's silly, sir. Do that. Don't even turn your car on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just roll it down a hill. <laughs> Start the car in your garage in honor of us uh, yeah. leaving yeah. the Philly radio. There you go. I will. All right, Alex. Yeah, All right, guys. Take it easy. Let's say hi to Mike in Pennsylvania. Mike, what's up? What's going on, guys? How's you guys' morning going? Doesn't hey. sound too hot, man. Uh, no, we're. Saying, you know, what? I see, I hear you guys are possibly leaving Philadelphia. That's kind of kind of makes me upset. Uh, we're gonna no nah, listen to, listen to me. We're gonna leave temporarily. We're gonna leave temporarily. I I can't even go without you guys temporarily. That that that's not even working. So I'm saying I'm going out today. I'm going to be an XM subscriber today. Oh, I promise you guys that. Uh, all right, good boy. Enjoy it. I'm sure, that gets stumped out of. No, ah, we'll really? see. We'll see. But there you go. I think John Cook should look up uh, the career of Dave, uh, Dave, uh, what's his last Dave name? Dave Douglas? Yeah, you might want to look up his uh, career after he did us wrong and see how that uh, worked out for him. Yeah, that never works out well. In the end, Dave Douglas was programming a business stock ticker radio station. That's how bad it got for Dave Douglas. Yep. After he did us wrong. Yeah, he did a radio station that just was a, a audible uh, audio stock ticker. It was a business <laughs> station. It was a. It was just. Yeah. It was just stock talk. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why would he dump out of that? A guy saying he was going to get accepted. Why would you do that? Oh, dump out of that too. Why? Because <laughs> they don't. Uh, they don't want to promote it. They don't want to promote it. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> there you go. That's what I do today. I stir sh you. Yeah. Oh, I stir stuff up. That's what I do today. <laughs> that was good. And I do have a doozy waiting. Just a big doozy. A Lolo. Right about now, Philly is realizing that they don't have Opie and Anthony anymore. Oops. In three, two, one. And there go the phones. Dude. And there go the phones. 
I don't even want to hear it. Tom Petty is playing on YSP. That is so much better than the Opie and Anthony show. If that doesn't prove that they just don't get it. It's kind of an insult to us that they think Tom Petty, an old, tired Tom Petty record, is better than the Opie and Anthony show. This business sucks a big, oh. hairy... No, running down a dude, dream. it is running down a dream. Oh, though. okay. I thought it was, you know, let's get to the point. Let's roll. Another diminution because you can't say joint. Yeah, I guess we don't have any listeners. Ah, the phones are lit. It's all Philly calls. What happened, they're saying? What happened? I'm, and I'm kind of disappointed with the fan sites because uh, those idiots just allowed, like, our enemies to take over the message boards. You guys are really stupid and got to regroup and wake the F up. Seriously, you got to wake the F up. You got to regroup and wake the F up. Our phone number, 877-212-ONA. Well, we got to address the Philly thing. Uh, obviously, I went off on a, uh, a pretty uh, a pretty impressive rant yesterday, I must say. <laughs> well, it, uh, and it that, got the attention of the uh, GM and the uh, PD, apparently. Yeah, finally. That was my intention. And then I did some research and stuff, and uh, everyone's getting their facts wrong on, uh, on fan sites and stuff. Uh, here's the deal. This is what I learned yesterday. Uh, because of my rant, they decided they no longer want to continue with the Opie and Anthony show. But here's the here's the interesting part of that. They were going to get rid of us within ten to ten to uh, fourteen days. Oh, really? So I just uh, I just sped up the whole process. Well, sped it up. Sped it up. I speeded it up. What? No, just sped it up. I sped it up. So they were getting rid of us uh, either way, but they didn't have the balls to tell us uh, in any form. They were going to just allow us to continue with the Opie and Anthony show in Philly, and then one day we'd come in here and not be on in Philly anymore. And I, like, I, like today. Huh? <laughs> like today. <laughs> well, yeah, but at least we found out before we went on the air. Instead of coming in here like dopes and, and going, hey, Philly, and then someone calls and goes, hey, you're, you're not, not on, on here today. <clears throat> So that that is uh, the first fact. The, the second fact is YSP, as we uh, know it, is dead. It's been dead for a really long time. And I, I, I almost posted on one of the message boards because one of the guys is like, you know, uh, Opie said when they first went back to regular radio how YSP gets it and they're already printing WOW stickers and, and they, they got promos and there's an excitement. That is all true at the time when I said that. YSP did get it. They were printing WOW stickers. They were making promos. They were very excited to have us back in Philly. But uh, some some things changed since that day and and recently. And that was getting rid of you know Karen Buck, who was like a soldier for this show down there. And also they changed PDs. Yeah, once that happened, there, there was a so guy Gil Edwards. Rough. I I can't believe I have to explain this to people. But there was a guy named Gil Edwards who really got the show as well. They got rid of him. The company got rid of him. They went decided to go into another direction. They hired this John Cook guy that never uh, believed in us, obviously, but came up here anyway and uh, lied to our faces that uh, that you know that he was very excited about working uh, with us and and they're going to flip formats and we're going to be a big part of that. And there was an excitement. Then we went down. I think a mere two or three days later, we broadcast live for two days. Had a, had a great turnout from the uh, the Philly fans, and then we did our virus show, and we had I don't know close to what ten thousand people in the venue. Yeah, and then sat for close to two hours after the show signing autographs. We got a huge audience in Philly, but for some reason, because uh, we've been left in the dark, they don't want this show in Philly anymore. Okay, and you can't really blame ratings. We we uh, I, and this is interesting because I'm reading the articles and they're, they're saying that uh, you know our ratings weren't that great. They kind of were all right. I mean, men 18 to 49. That's why we do the Opie and Anthony show. That's why we do it. And we're in fourth place and moving up. Okay, nothing to brag about, but it's not too shabby. In uh, men 18 to 34, another real key demo for this radio show. We were in third place. Okay, mm -hmm. and I've been doing radio a long time, and I know what people hate when I say that, but I have, and I'm pretty educated. You don't get rid of a radio show that is fourth men, 18 to 49, and uh, third, 18 to 34 in men. You just don't do it. You just don't do it. just shows how stupid they are down there. They're absolutely stupid. Well, they did it. And it's really frustrating uh, to sit here and take this one because... 
you know, we just did an article for FMQB, and we were talking about, you know, syndicating a radio show. And the reality is, you know, you get uh, thrown into a bunch of markets, and in some markets you're going to do great, like uh, like Boston, like Buffalo. I hear we're doing very well in Syracuse, and and then in other places you're just you're just not going to ever find your audience for whatever reason. Like mm-hmm. Detroit, we never found our audience. Chicago, they kind of messed with our time slot, and it never got better after that. We're on like five a.m. to eight a.m. It's a little weird. We understand we're going to lose Chicago, and that doesn't. That's fine. That's fine with us, you know. But losing Philly is so ridiculous and infuriating, I can't even tell you. And I told corporate yesterday, I'm like, we have to lose Philly, a very important market to us, because they hired a bunch of dummies down there that don't get it. That, it, that is so frustrating to me. So frustrating. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, would have liked to have uh, stayed on in Philly, but... Eh, didn't work out. What are you going to do? Uh, Bobby, what's up? One of our first syndicated market that we were in. Hey, Bobby, what's going on? Hey. Hello. Bobby, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, Bobby? Uh, I, I I don't get it. I don't I don't get how how they just they, they didn't get the show. It, it seems like the, the O&A show is, is something that Philly can really sink their, their teeth into as opposed to these you know, dopey president and Steve. How do they get that but not get O and A? I just don't freaking get it. Well, I mean, we did all right. I mean, YSP. The fact is, the legendary YSP is a very damaged uh, radio station. It has been for a while, and uh, you know, it, it was going to take even more time to get the ratings up. And unfortunately, we don't get that chance now. So, I, I mean, the phones are just—they're just lit. John, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? What's up, John? Well, I drive uh, pretty far to work every day, spanning Jersey to uh, Philly, and I can't believe you guys are off. Uh, every Everything in Philly sucks, basically. Um, all the radio stations, and uh, I hate the city in general, to be honest. But Well, I, but, uh, I don't hate Philly, because I don't want this to be uh, an F Philly uh, thing. I, I, I say FYSP, absolutely, but, uh, you know. Oh, definitely. I mean, our show really, really caught on in Philly over the years. You know, we brought our comedy tour down there for a reason. Those guys really, really are hardcore fans and get the radio show. So, so is, there, is there any plans like of, of another station in Philly? Like, have you talked to anybody else? Or uh, no comment at this time, there, sir. Let's uh, say hi to Justin. Justin, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Uh, I I just can't move to Philly. I came from uh, New York, and uh, I thought I was going to have the LNA show. I guess not. What the hell? I got to move to XM now? Yep. Well, you could get an XM, that's for sure. But I, I guess they dump out XM uh, mentions over here. The guy did yesterday, he shouldn't have. He admitted he shouldn't have. Oh, okay. So they're not dumping out today? No, why would they? Well, they dumped out yesterday. That's why. He panicked. All right. Well, I didn't know that until just now. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Dave, what's up? Hey, not much, guys. Long time listener, first time caller. I just want to say, sorry to hear that you guys are going in uh, Philadelphia. You know, screw YSP. You know, I was a long-time listener with Howard and everybody else, and, you know, I don't like the rock and roll, so FYSP. I, I, strongly, uh, I strongly suggest that you don't support that radio station. Get the word out. Do not support that effing station. And, and it's going to be a lot Jesus. of... Jesus. What? what? I don't know. I just don't think the rest of CBS is going to enjoy hearing that. Oh, I don't give a crap. Yeah, I know. I don't really give a crap anymore. I, 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 I understand back. you don't. I ain't going to sit back and take this crap. I, absolutely, we could tell our listeners not to support YSP and get the word out. Don't support YSP. Mike in Philly, what's up? Mike, what's up? You want to get thrown oh, off man. every station? And we're not oh, going to get thrown that? off every station. Do you want to? No, I don't want to. Oh. No. I'm just wondering because saying don't support a CBS station, no matter how much you hate it, gets yeah. up to management and management goes, you know something? We don't need the headache of these idiots. Well, yeah, we're uh, idiots. So we, we get, were, I'm not saying we're idiots. I'm saying management will say we were just treated like crap, dude. Of course we were. All right, we're but not. I'm just we're saying, not idiots. If you bash, I'm not bashing CBS. The, Did you hear me? I'm bashing YSP. They a, treated us like crap. They threw us out with the morning garbage. You will not. And get, now I want our our fans not to support YSP. I didn't say one thing about uh, CBS. I didn't say one thing about the other radio stations. 
I just know how management thinks. Well, then so be it. Then we just go over to XM and and we'll have a little fun. What can I tell you? It's it's almost impossible to sit here and take this crap. Let's say hi to Eddie in Philly. Eddie. I sat through syndication underground. I sat through the the, the suspension. I sat and waited. And you know what? Now I got to deal with this? With this? Are you kidding me? How? It's just ridiculous. I don't. I don't care what you guys have to do. Get back down here because you know what? You got such a strong fan base down here. And if they don't get it, you know what? You're right. F them. I'm not. I'm never going to listen to that station again. I didn't listen to that station before when Idiot Boy was on. I'm not going to listen to him now. That I, I got to wake up a Pearl Jam. I'm sorry. If I want to listen to Pearl Jam, I'll listen to my iPod. Okay. No. Uh, I wanted my play. Then- they know what they're doing. Pearl Jam is much more important than the Opie and Anthony show. Bob in South Jersey, what's up? Oh, no. I, this is Paul. All right, whatever it is, I'm a, I'm a truck driver. I, I listen to Owen and a all morning long. I'm going to I'm gonna go through my company, get a petition put together, and get the idiot that got you yanked fired. There's enough truck drivers that I deal with every day that I can do it. All right. Thank you, Bob. Let's go to Rob in Pennsylvania. band together the truck drivers. <laughs> Rob, what's up? What's up, guys? Hey. Yeah, I've just been listening on hold on my cell phone since YSP uh, has no action going on except Pearl Jam Papa Roach. Oh, that's good. And they, and they did, I was incorrect, they did dump out of the reference to satellite radio because... No. Just, just now? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you They'll can't do that. that. That's how they operate. <laughs> That's how they operate. <sighs> All right, okay, um, guys. I'll just uh, keep it alive on 202. All right, thank you, sir. Let's say hi to Dan in Syracuse. Dan, what's up? Hey, man. How you guys doing this morning? Pretty good. Ah, uh, Syracuse, I love you, man. Phil Jane after Howard. Love you guys. Don't know what the heck Billy's thinking about, man. Tell you the truth. All right. Not a couple. I'll tell you. But uh, you guys go off at 9 o'clock here. I wish you were on. I wish you were on for the full shot, man. I really do. Oh, well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Joe, what's going on? Yo, what's up, guys? How you doing today? Hey, pretty good. It's a dark day in Philly, man. It's a dark day. Uh, it's it's so ridiculous, well, I can't even tell you. Usually is. <laughs> you guys uh, plan on coming to any other stations around here or not? Uh, we're going to figure that out, sir. Is there any going to be anything, anything on the website that I can have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just keep checking the websites. Uh, let's go to Dave. Dave, what's up? Hey, boys. What's happening? Hey. Hey, listen. Uh, I couldn't wait while I woke up listening to that shit. Oh, sorry. Listen to that stuff here. Tom Petty on there. So I flicked on the X7 in the house on the uh, satellite. Uh, hey, what the hell is really thinking? They took away every, every talk show on it that was funny, and they blow you guys. Hmm. Yeah. I gave my X7 to my girlfriend. I'm stealing it back now from my car. I can't deal with this anymore. All right. Thanks, Dave. Hey. All right. Well, there you go. Off. Off. Oh, well. That does explain why he wasn't calling back. Well, it certainly does. That is kind of revolting. I won't, uh, I won't ever say that guy isn't a douche. He certainly is. But I mean, what are you gonna do? The hell are you gonna do? I just hate, you know, you look at the papers and go, oh, okay, this is how they report it. This is nice. The truth of the matter is, we were gonna be off in a couple of weeks, but yesterday someone got their feelings hurt in Philly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, nobody tells you anything. It's like they really don't operate. I mean, there really is truth to the fact they don't operate like men because they don't just tell you what's going on. Nobody ever tells you what's going nah. on. Nah, they're afraid you're going to say something and ruin their plan. Their big <laughs> plan that everybody figures out anyway before it happens. I've never seen a radio secret that has lasted uh, till they want to pop it. People usually rat, catch on. The word gets out. But they're all just phony. I think there's a new rock station in uh, Philly which has been kicking YSP's ass, which is, uh, I think, a clear channel station or whatever. And I think that's why they made the format flip, because they had uh, MMR and then that new station, I think. Yeah, they're running Jockless or something. Yeah. 
Just music. Yeah. Like an iPod. <laughs> uh, Delson, what's up? Man, I'm listening to music. I feel like killing myself in Philly this morning. What song is on? Right now? Let's see. Uh, now it's a commercial. That's better than what the hell I was just listening to. <laughs> <laughs> they know what Jesus. they're doing down there, though. Oh, man, it's killing me, dude. Jimmy, you killed at the Philadelphia tour. Thanks, bud. Oh, my God. Uh, Harry, Philly, what's up? Harry. What happened? Uh, we kind of just explained the whole thing. They they, well, yeah. they they know better. YSP knows better. You know, the okay, great YSP. Okay. I don't want to trash him too much because I got to try to keep my job. So the great YSP. They they know better than uh, we do. I, I apologize. I encourage everyone to go listen to music for the, for, uh, for the coming weeks until they make their announcement. I don't want to piss yeah, off the I company really too much. I'm looking forward to hearing jet reruns 11 times a day. What's not the love? Thanks. Have a good one, Punkin' Al. Uh, Chris, what's going on? Hello? Hey, Hello? Chris. Yeah, I, I'm just calling to complain that you know I'm down in Philly. Did, did you know that this is going to be happening this morning? Uh, we found out yesterday afternoon. Yeah. But they were going to do it within uh, 10 days to two weeks anyway, so. This crap. Uh, no, they know what they're doing down there. I fully support the move. I think it's a great one for Philly and uh, radio in general. So, Well, that sucks. You got a fan missing you, man. All right. Thank you, Chris. I knew I didn't like uh, uh, the guy. What is his name? John, John Cook? John Cook. Cook. I knew I didn't like him. when if he, I think he was the guy because I said he looked like Mohammed Atta because of his hairdo. And yeah. He mad. It was like... It was like you. He came in. and He goes, "Wow, you can come up with a better one than that." And I immediately know you're not a funny person. No, because that was a good one. You, I'm sorry, you look like him. I didn't see you act like him. But the fact that he exactly what he was, he was just a douche in a suit. Yeah. Who got annoyed that he got teased? Yep. And I, the, the moment that's that what happened, happened, I was like, "Ugh, what a tool." That's exactly what happened. He got his little feelings hurt. Yeah. Hey, right, come up with a better one than that. No, that was the reference. No, that was a good one. I said it, idiot. It was a good joke. <laughs> well, we could just keep taking calls from Philly, but uh, we'll take a break. Uh, we got a thousand dollars to give away today. Who gives an ass with the sound that wasn't approved, with, that no one liked in management? Why? Uh, because it's it's too short. Really? Yeah, it was too short. I forget what it was. It's you know. What do you? Uh, it's a great one. I'll find it on my machine. Well, here's the sound you play it. Here's the sound you're uh, listening for if you want to win a thousand dollars today we, you between to, seven and seven thirty. We have to find it, but it sounds like. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> it sounds it's like just that, like but it. half the length. Mm. There it is on number four. Remember that it's on four. Would you? There you go. When you hear that between 7 and 7.30, you'll uh, win $1,000 if you're the 10th caller. 877-212. O-N-A. It's Opie and Anthony. Phones are lit. Yep. As a bit of turmoil down there in Philly. It's going to be rough. Huh? It's going to be rough to get, like, calls that aren't this, but let's say hi to Joe in Philly. Joe, what's up? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey, man. Hey, Joe. I, you know, I, I get out, I get out the, you know, my car is going to go to work. I turn on the radio, and there's stupid music on. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what is going on? Well, they think and, uh, they think playing music is uh, much better than listening to our radio show, which is the biggest insult, by the way. So far, they've played yeah. Tom Petty, Running Down a Dream, Pearl Jam, Corduroy, Holy S, P.O.D. Alive, Jet, Are You Gonna Be My Girl, Rush Limelight and the Toadies Possum Kingdom. Rush yeah, Limelight? All right, all right, no. I like Rush. I like Limelight. All right, no. I haven't heard that on the radio in the last no. I'll keep babbling. Why don't you, Joe? Just keep babbling. All right. Thank you, Joe, for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, Ken in Delaware. Ken, what's up? Ken. Hey, yeah, guys. What's up, man? Hey. Yeah, I don't want to repeat what that guy just said, but basically the same thing happened to me this morning. What? <laughs> I said, I don't want to repeat what that guy just said, but the same thing happened to me this morning in the car. Oh, you tuned in and, uh, hey, we weren't there. 
We're in here. Yeah, that's how it works in radio. All of a sudden, like, it was hilarious because, like, the decision went down. Within seconds, they wipe any uh, any trace of us off their website, off the actual radio station. <laughs> I think they had the van repainted already. It's it's so <laughs> infuriating and instantaneous. Yeah, I was work and check out the website, but uh, I guess I won't bother then. No, there you go. There you um, go. Do you guys have any plans to go to another station down here? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, oh, really? absolutely. This is the funny thing, by the way. A lot of people uh, thought Anthony and I went back to regular radio because we wanted to make more money. Uh, the fact is, the deal we made is is okay. It's it's not it's not uh, you know you know blowing anyone away. No, here. it's not the be all end all radio deal. That's for sure. And it's so funny when I read about that that oh they just went back to regular radio because they wanted to make more money. Now no, what we really wanted to do is we went back to regular radio because we wanted our stuff. We just did a really long article for FMQB by the way. It's coming out Friday, and we'll make sure it's on the the websites. It came out very well. Uh and we, we explained that we went back to regular radio because we want a lot more people hearing our stuff. That was the, the, that was the main reason why we went back to regular radio. Yeah. We like the satellite. We like the freedom it gives us. But, you know, we weren't talking to a lot of people. Just at this point, you're not going to get as many people as you get on regular radio. You know, there's an article that came out today about um, satellite radio ratings and... Um, Howard is talking to one point, uh, I believe, I don't want to misquote this, so I think it's 1.2 million people, okay, mm -hmm. if you can believe the satellite radio ratings. He used to talk to 20 million. Yeah. And that's exactly how we felt when we were just exclusive to satellite. We're like, we were frustrated. We're like, we want our show and our stuff to be heard by a lot more people. It wasn't about the money. And some of the really hardcore fans of the show are convinced that's why we went back to regular radio. No. First and foremost, we want to be heard by as many people as possible. Yeah. That's what you do with a radio show. You know? That's what we wanted. I mean... We did. I mean, you, you could have uh, 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 true you know, freedom if, if you just hang out with your buddies in, in, at a bar and, and talk. Mm -hmm. But, you know... No it, one's going to hear it. <laughs> no one's going to hear it, but you're going to have you know, no censorship. You can say whatever the hell you want. You know? And, and that's kind of the dilemma with the satellite and the regular radio, but we thought it was important to try to talk to a lot more people at this time. Mm -hmm. And while the, the whole satellite radio world, like, uh, continues to grow. Yeah. That was the reason we went back to regular radio. I'll bet you that number is very accurate because they're, they're going through merger talks and uh, everything has to be reported to the Justice Department. So, I mean, like, their books are wide open. I mean, it's, it's like what they're, that's probably a really accurate number. Well, if it's accurate, mm -hmm. they're saying that we're uh, talking to a lot less than Howard is on. Uh, on satellite radio. Oh, no. Yeah. What liars. <laughs> well, and that's what's weird because our the company had told us differently. So I, who, who, who knows? I know this much, though. You talk to less people. I heard the survey was done when we were um, suspended. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, they're not going <laughs> to. That's, that's not, good. I'm, I'm not kidding. But that's, they're not going to report that. No, of course not. You no, know, because already I see on some of the uh, radio sites, uh, you know, people are laughing at us that Howard's talking to five times more people on satellite than we are. Yeah. But now you're saying that that survey was done when we were suspended for 30 uh -huh. years. But that won't be reported. No. It won't be reported that when they did suspend us, like uh, a lot of listeners uh, dropped their. their yeah, canceled. Canceled their, uh, their subscription to satellite. Yeah. So. Weren't listening. So we did not go back to regular radio to make a lot of money. The deal wasn't that great. It, it, what was great about the deal was it gave us the opportunity to talk to a lot more people, and we continued to talk to a lot more people. Mm -hmm. As frustrated as I am about the Philly situation, because I really think that those two guys down there are just are a bunch of dopes, and it will be proven in the end. It, 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 it's always proven in the end. You yeah. know that It's going to be proven they don't know what the F they're doing. Okay, Simple as that. But and 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 I told like uh, you know corporate I'll say it again how frustrating it is that we have to lose a key market for us because because uh, they don't know what they're doing down there they just don't mm -hmm. you know and that's not a slam on the company and someone then says on instant feedback uh, because I went silent for a while there that I was getting chewed out by management I absolutely was not being chewed out by management what? okay I had a nice talk with Tom in the hall uh, as soon as we went to break I was not getting chewed out I I, I can't tell you the last time I got chewed out by management. I run the show. I run the out. show. What the hell is it? It's junior high. And to, Shoot out. And, and to prove that it's not about money, th this is, this is. I'm speaking for myself. All right? We're not on affiliate anymore. We're not on YSP anymore. 
this will prove, hopefully, to a bunch of idiots out there that we're not doing this, uh, you know, completely for the money. I want to be back on in Philly sooner than later. We got to look at the dumb contract to see what our rights are. But uh, I think Bob is too busy, like, negotiating a deal to have Kid Chris replace us. That's just terrific. That's not going to drive me nuts whatsoever, by the way. That's another story for another day. But here's the deal. Simple as this. I want to get back on in Philly. I want to be back on in mornings. I want to take out YSP, and I want to take out Preston and Steve. Simple as that. And I want to do it for free. I want to do radio in Philly for free to prove that I'm not doing this for money. Proving that I have the passion to do this, and we're not done in Philly. That's what I do now. And I want to get the word out. We'll call some of the, uh, we'll call some of the radio sites like FMQB and r and r and inside radio and all access and we'll call dan gross in uh in philly who writes the gossip column simple as this i opie want to get back into the into the philly radio market and i will work for free simple as that that's how much i believe in this show and how much it's gonna work in philly and i don't want any any like uh you know, uh, station owners all confused, like, oh, God, I don't know if we can afford them. Well, go, let's just take that out of the equation. <laughs> I work for free in Philly. I work for free in Philly radio. That's what I say today. Can I have your money? Yeah, I'll give you a few <laughs> shekels. But that's what I do, because I'm sick of people saying that, you know, oh, they ju they're, they're just going for the money. They're just going for the money. They don't, they don't really care anymore. No, I, I care too much. That's my problem with this whole thing so that's what I do today I work for free get me back in a station in Philly I work for free for slave wages not even free free I work for free for another radio company down there in Philly free that's what I do now and let's get the word out get Dan Gross on the phone let's say hi to Jeremy Jeremy what's up Nothing. I just started on the radio earlier. What happened to you guys? What's the boy take you off? Uh, yeah, well, John Cook uh, thinks that playing uh, the Toadies Possum Kingdom uh, is going to get the job done in morning radio. This song's catchy. Uh, it is catchy. Make up your mind. It's catchy when, it, when we played it 10 years ago yeah. at AF. How my morning suck. <laughs> no, that's that's really smart. Get rid of Opie and Anthony and then compete with iPods. That's That's, that's brilliant. Now they're playing No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Well, that's a pretty good, uh, yeah, that's a deeper track by the Beastie Boys. Boys. That's a good one. I like that one. I actually have that one on my iPod. Barely you ever hear that one. Uh, uh, all right, we're going to move on to other things. We're going to try. Ronnie, girl, Philly, what's up? I'm angry. I just woke up and my, and my alarm clock was... <laughs> music and it wasn't you and i'm really my day sucks oh no it's just so funny how radio works too because you really you really become part of some of these people's lives like they wake up to you they get into That's the show they, they go out and support the show the radio station makes it sound like it's one big family and yeah. then one day they just chop your head off <laughs> i mean it's just amazing to you're me you're disowned by the family right for a minute huh can I be a pain in the butt for a minute? And can I ask, like, can you guys just keep me on hold so I can put you on a speakerphone and listen to you while I get ready for work? Yeah, sure. We can do that for you today. <laughs> Love you. We're gonna, nice. just going to take one one, one listener at a time in Philly there by, you go. We got, by the phone. He's on hold. We uh, There you go. Our audience just went up by one person in Philly. We're back on. We're back on in Philly. <laughs> on the phone. Talking to one. What kind of ratings uh, can you get for one person listening? I don't know. What if she listens 24 hours a day? I think I think we get a, an impressive number there. That would be pretty good. I think we get an impressive number. I listen on hold. Is that uh what's that, what station is that? No, hold on the phone, <laughs> <laughs> not the hold. <laughs> uh let's go to Tony in Chicago. Tony, what's up, buddy? Hey man, I just want to say I support you guys 100% here in Chicago. Oh right? boy. Thank you, Pray sir. Pray to God they don't take you off. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Tony. You'll miss us. <laughs> You'll miss us. <laughs> it was interesting. I know how much I could say, but there is a uh, there is uh, some happiness with us and the company, and they're working on things. I could say that much, and they're uh, talking to the radio stations we're on. And I found this kind of funny. Remember how we? Uh, and I'm not speaking out of turn. It's it's, it's just kind of funny. You know how like West Palm doesn't really like the show and doesn't want it and stuff. Yeah. 
they haven't said no to the uh, <laughs> negotiations that are going on. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't said no. I'm starting to like that West Palm because they're just weird. <laughs> they're just they're just weirdos they're down just there. Weirdos. <laughs> They've hated this show since we. Uh, Went on in West Palm Beach a, a year and a half ago. They hated us. From day one, the first memo we got, they basically said, yuck. <laughs> a year and a half later, we hey. have this weird relationship with West Palm Beach. And it was brought to my attention that, mm. that like, let's just put it this way. Uh, they could have said no by now. Yeah. And they haven't. Uh, is that promising? I uh, Honestly, I don't think so. A, but, we're, we're rocking on the buzz, dude. Right. But I... But it was just funny to me that they're kind of taking their time and thinking about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Which I find hilarious. Just waiting. Maybe, maybe they haven't found the right person. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're just going, ah, we'll see what they do. <laughs> we'll uh, out of sight, out of mind. And I'll say it again. The, the West Palm Beach situation, man, I truly, and I'm not kissing ass right now, because I, I heard this news yesterday, mm -hmm. and I... I mean, my gut feeling is we're going to be gone in West Palm Beach, but I have to say it again. I do respect the PD down there because he always told us where we stood. <laughs> always, from day one. Right, which was far away from him as human. <laughs> right. All of a sudden, he had like meetings he had to go to when we were down there. and Yeah. Had to go play golf. And, you know, then they had their big concert that we were kind of part of. And we had like the last dressing room that was like kind of attached to the parking lot. We get it. They did the bare minimum for us, and I respect that. There's really no O and A stuff at the show. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, that was. But a, we went down there. It was a fun day. We went down there ten months ago, ten months ago, and we thought we were gonna lose the show. Like as soon as we got back to New York, it's been another yeah. ten months, and we're just kind of still limping along for them in hey. West Palm Beach, Florida. God bless. And, and it was brought to my attention that they haven't ruled out. They haven't ruled it out yet. Yeah, but it's if I was a betting man, though, you know, come on, please. I mean, please. But I just found that kind of funny. Ah, uh, wow. Uh, let's say hi to Mike and Philly. Mike, what's up? Hello. Uh, yeah, long time listener. I'm just wondering why uh, I'm not hearing you on the radio today. Well, they decided that music's more important, and they uh, someone's feelings got hurt yesterday when I uh, when I called uh, John Cook a wussy boy. He really, he really should like uh, look up Dave Douglas's career. It, it's going to be a lot of fun in the coming uh, months and, <laughs> and coming year. That's for sure. That's for sure. So they're doing music now, but they, I mean, because then, then I heard the stupid Opie blew the whole thing up. No, I'm not. I'm not stupid, by the way. I really am pretty calculated. And it, and it was it was proven to me yesterday when corporate told me no they were gonna get rid of you guys in ten to ten to fourteen days I just beat them to the punch and got some fine shots in. So Mike, they're wow. playing uh, music instead of us. So enjoy, enjoy, have fun with that. I'm sure that'll work for everybody. Yeah. All right, let's go to Dan in Philly. Dan, what's up? Yo, what's going on, guys? Hey, man. Uh, I've been listening to you for like three months now, and. Uh... Pretty sad to hear that you guys are gone. Jimmy, you are hilarious, dude. Thank you, mister. I loved you in uh, Lucky Louie. Who didn't? And, uh, <laughs> the critics. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> On Serain kicks ass. Thanks, fella. All right, sir. And it's pretty sad, man, that you guys aren't on anymore because you guys are awesome. Well, we'll figure something out. But I, 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 I mean it, man. My... My word has always been my word. It, I want to get back on in Philly, and I will work for free to prove to the critics we're not doing this uh, solely for money. For Sounds free. Can't wait to hear it, guys. it was a sad day when Karen Buck left. She was very good to us down there. That was that kind of sucked. Yeah, that was like a final straw kind of yeah. a thing right there. Karen Buck was like the uh, the backbone of that station for many years, and uh, we ran into Tim Sabian for the first time at the uh, the Pat Cooper roast, and I gave him props. I'm like, man, Tim, just hasn't been the same since you left. You knew how to work this uh, radio show in, in a syndicated market. You know, that's really, mm -hmm. really important. But, yeah, Karen Buck was the final blow. The, one by one, they were leaving, and it just isn't the same radio station that we know and love. And that was told to me yesterday, too. Look, you know. You know, all the people that uh, really uh, were behind you guys and got the show are long gone. It's a, it's a, it's a new, it's a new team of management, new regime, new regime, and they're uh, they're 
I swear to God, this was told to me, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but they decided to roll the dice instead of continue with us. I hope that's not too infuriating. They're just going to roll the dice. Ouch. I hope <laughs> <laughs> I hope he rolls the dice and it comes up positive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to get interesting. Douche. <laughs> it's stupid fruit. It's going to get very, very interesting in the coming oh, weeks. Hope he months. hangs himself. Auto, hope he auto asphyxiates with the pants around his ankles <laughs> and his stupid. But family finds him. <laughs> Yuck. Didn't like my joke, did you? Corporate douche. No. Uh, didn't like your fine joke. It was a gem. That's what you look like. It was. Uh, now your hair blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy Arab. Uh, Dave in Pennsylvania. Dave? Yes, sir. What's up? Hey, they roll the dice and it comes up crap. <laughs> <laughs> Not even craps. Just comes up crap. They're moving in a different direction towards the fag world. What a bunch of bitches. There you go. Well, there was uh, there was an email I, I didn't read on the air that uh, we had a we had a mole within the within the walls and and uh, they said the programming department uh, smells of family values. There's a whiff in the air of uh, family values. Oh. Was written in one of the emails that was snuck out of the uh, YSP compound. Ugh. Did the guy say there was a whiff of family values coming from the programming department? So good luck with that. That that's that's a, that's proven to be very successful. Uh, family when, values. When a radio station decides to go that way, John Cook was moving into a di different direction. Hopefully, it was into a gentleman's lap, <laughs> head first. <laughs> Let me talk into this. <laughs> <laughs> Silly goose. <laughs> And, you know, Family values. And, what? And, and uh, you know what's infuriating is they just couldn't tell us man to man what the f was going they on. Never That's went. why I have a massive problem with this. Massive. We've been kicked off radio stations before, and people told us to us, uh, our face, like Dan Mason when we ran into him, you know, and and do one of our meetings every once in a while. He looked us right in the eye and go, "Guys, not looking good in some of these markets. We're gonna have to make some changes." That's a man. Yeah. It's frustrating. You're like, "Oh, come on, man. You know, why don't you?" You know, support the show a little bit and maybe throw some uh, marketing behind it. But at least he's a man. He looks you right in the eye and goes, look, it's not looking good for some of these markets. And he listed a couple markets. And guess mm -hmm. what? A few months later, we were gone from those markets. I respect that. I really do. I respect the other PDs that had the balls to freaking look me in the eye and say, you're wrong or this is what's happening. So don't get me wrong here. I don't respect uh, wussy boys that go hiding behind, uh, not even hiding behind emails. He didn't even do that. No. He wasn't even brave enough to send an email. That is not looking any. good. And there, and don't tell me that, you know, uh, I couldn't play my card or something. There's things you could do to at least show, look, I, I'm in a tough situation. You're not looking good. Something. You Instead know what, of just um, hiding. You know what I heard last night? That he had said he uh, called both of us and we never call, got back to him. Oh, wow. And I was like, don't I just said, I said, play that. that's an outright lie. There, the, 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 the guy did not even make an attempt yeah. wow. to get in touch with us. Yeah. There you go. There's the type of guy John Cook is. Now that he'll got just blatantly me. lie. To, that got me. Uh, to try to cover his ass. Pretty infuriated. John Cook, John Cook, John Cook, enemy of the show. John Cook, John Cook on the old FO list. The old FO list. An FO. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hope he's caught in a rest area with a power drill, <laughs> making a hole to make new friends. The old FO list is back. The old peekaboo hole. Caught in an airport bathroom with tap shoes on. <laughs> like, either you're Gregory Hines or you're going to jail. <laughs> uh, Jessica and Philly, what's up? anyone not to hear me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Um, I just want to tell you guys I love this show. Um, I, I've I went two years in a row to see you guys in Philly at the virus tour, and it was amazing to me. You were awesome. Thank and I you. Just wanna, I just want to see if you guys, you know, if you don't get back on in Philly, um, I have you guys on 202, so it's okay with me. But I want to see if you guys, if you do another virus tour, are you guys still going to come down to Philly? Uh, Philly is really important to us no matter what. We, we would love to go down to Philly for another comedy show. But we might That's be doing good. something different next year anyway. we got to keep mixing it up, so... But, That's good, guys. Well, we'll Always still be going down there for appearances and stuff. It's a huge market for us. It's a huge yeah. market for Jimmy and all the comedians we have on yep. this show. It's just a huge, huge market for us. The ratings weren't as good as we would have liked, but it wasn't like we were a, a complete disaster, okay? Thank you, Jessica. Thanks, guys.
All right. Uh, we're going to give away $1,000 uh, between 7 and 7.30. You want to play that sound for everybody? The short sound oh. that uh, Tracy had a problem with. What, what's the difference if it's a short sound or a long sound? She said the promos. Like I, I, I was. I think they have a promo written. The home. What? Oh no! no they, oh, they, they run stations in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really look like him. <laughs> okay, good point. Uh, you do, stupid. Um, she said the promos have to be. Uh, uh. That's why, because it was hard to to put into the promos. There you go. That's what you're listening for. That's what for. you're listening for. Not right now. Good luck. See, it's short, but the faithful listeners know that clip very well. Yeah. The prize pigs might be a little confused uh, trying to figure out uh, what the sound is, but the faithful listeners are right there with us. Boom. Yep. Right there. So when you hear that between 7 and 7.30, call, and the uh, 10th caller will get $1,000. We're going to... We're going to attempt to move on. Um, you know, it's one more thing you know, that's annoying about being off at YSP. It's that we were attacking the other morning show. It's like, you're not going to, what are you going to do? Just roll over and bite a pillow and take it? <laughs> at least we were attacking the other show and, and trying to make their lives a little miserable. Like, yeah. Calling out their awful, stupid bits. You know, it was gonna, it was gonna happen too. That pillow biter. I have no doubt in my mind it was gonna happen. <laughs> oh, but you're right. But you, John couldn't call because every time he spoke, feathers flew out of his mouth from biting a pillow. <laughs> just, just uh, <laughs> he coughs and feathers just fly out and down. And people didn't like my choice of uh, insults. Wussy boy, I went with. Sorry, but half the other stuff I want to say I can't say anymore. So wussy boy. That's is true. What we're down to, and he is a wussy boy. He's not a man. Nowhere's near a man. Right. If you don't see your family, you can never be a true man. Uh, let's say hi to Dave in Virginia. Dave, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Dave. Hey, hey guys. Hey. Hey, uh, I want to wake up my spouse. Okay. Oh, goody. She's been bitching for a week about the ice maker not working. Well, guess what's working? The ice maker. It's beautiful. I've got the bucket right here okay. filled with ice. Okay, it is Wake Up Your Spouse Wednesday. Too bad he's not the ice man. It'd be great to hear him wake your spouse up. <laughs> bucket of acid. All right. You know how we want this, right, sir? I got to get the phone, right? I'm going to plant it next to her, and then I'm going to go back and get the ice bucket, and then I'm going to dump it. All right. That sounds good. All right, let's go. All right. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Wake up your spouse. Mm -hmm. Dave is bucket of ice. Dave's wake up, Philadelphia! Oh, man, it'd be great to hear him Um... Um, yeah. Wake up, Philadelphia. Sir. And I swear to God, he hung up. I yes. have no idea what the what that was supposed to be. Was he going to play another radio station? Was he going to play YSP? What was he doing? Was they he... really screw Bro. up with this show because they should just stay on the air. There's a real panic that happens when people try to prank us. I don't know <laughs> why. I think we're very intimidating. They, really they want to get out of it very quickly. But what does Wake Up Philadelphia mean at the end of that? Was that even a prank or was he yelling at us? And then there was sort of a radio station. I don't know which station. Yeah. What station was he trying to promote? One that's on in Philly. <laughs> Maybe his spouse is John Cook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, sir. All right. Hey, Ronnie. Hello? Ronnie. Yo! Are you still listening to us? It doesn't sound like it. Listen to him. Get ready for work. I got you on a speakerphone. Oh, speakerphone. All right. Uh, we're uh, talking future. to our only listener in Philly at this point. Yeah. Uh, Shut up. We, well, you are. Well, really. you are. No, no joke. We're you're not on. on. Hold. I, and I'm Nobody talking commercial radio, me. of course. Uh, no, you're the only person in Philly listening to the Opie and Anthony show today. Do you feel privileged? Of course I do. You're the only one we put on hold. Unless they found another way, maybe through the internet, or satellite, maybe. obviously. Maybe. But we're talking about just. You know, the average uh, average listener like Ronnie that would just tune us in on YSP. So you're the only listener today. How does it feel? I rock. You're special. Yeah. I am. I am freaking special. Now, if you tell a friend, tomorrow we could have two listeners. I can't believe nobody else asked you to do that, though. Uh, no, they did not. That's just gay. <laughs> but you're going to have to tell somebody, and we're going to put two people on hold tomorrow to hear the fine show. Yeah. So we could double our audience in Philly. Yep. If I call tomorrow, will you do that for me again? Absolutely. A hundred percent increase in listenership if she gets a friend. Yeah, then we could put out a yeah. press release and, yeah. and show everyone how great we're doing. Okay, now, um, are they really thinking about replacing you with Kid Chris? Because if that's true, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. Don't uh, shoot yourself. It's pretty obvious that's what's going to happen. I mean, you know. No, I hate Kid Chris. Well, no, don't, don't, don't shoot yourself. Uh, then you you'll lose your 
on hold listener. Could you shoot yourself though live on the show? Because that if you had to, that. okay. Because that certainly would create a buzz. If you I had to, that. right? The news would have to report on that, and then everyone would have to tune in that show to go. Wow, that this is the show that had a listener kill himself live on the show. This is mm, great. Yeah. Well, and then I we'd be off for a while. <laughs> in the foot or something. But what? I might shoot myself in the foot. All Maybe right. not, you know, kill myself because I do have a daughter. All right, I'm going to put you back on hold. <laughs> Don't want to lose our only listener in Philly, so I'm going to be very nice today. There you but go. You... Ronnie's back on hold, the only listener listening mm-hmm. in Philly right now. Uh, John in Philly, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. I'm missing you already. I don't know what to do. You want me to send Luca Brasi over there? Thank you, John. No, that wasn't the sound for tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> thank you, John. Yeah, that's not tomorrow's sound. Well, you could do that sound. WISPsucks.com. Interesting. Hello? Hey, this is Jamie in Philly. I'm just saying I miss you guys already. Thank you. We're missed. Hello? Hey. Hey. You guys there? Yeah. You know what? I, I just I know you're probably tired of explaining it, you know, but like, I turned on YSP and heard music, and right away I knew something was wrong. So, uh, I mean, I tried calling you guys before and never got through, and luckily I got through this time. Can you just tell me, you know, what happened? Uh, they... YSP? Uh, I, I, I guess, yeah, I haven't been listening for the last uh, month. We've been hinting at this. Like, there was something wrong down there, and they decided to go in another direction, which I think is really, really stupid. Yeah. Really stupid. So, well, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I've been listening. I guess I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of thick. No, I, I, I don't mean to... I don't mean to trash you. Maybe you weren't listening when we were talking about that situation over the last month. But it's it's been painfully obvious ever since our virus show down there that something something was going on, and uh, for yeah, some the- reason they uh, they they were I don't know they just lied to our faces. The latest one is now now this uh, John Cook is saying that he did call Aunt and I, and that's just uh, that's just a flat out lie. No, we but that's what a wuss call. boy will do. You know, they'll just panic and then start making up lies to try to save face. But it's too late at this point. Everyone knows he's not a man. He's just not a man. This John Cook down there. It's one of these situations where uh, the the station was what it was back uh, in, as they say, the day, and there were people there that were uh, uh, supportive of the show. Very cool. We got along with them very well. And then they bring in new people, and when new people come in and the old people go out. Uh, you you got to figure out if you're gonna get along, if uh, uh, they have these new harebrained ideas, uh, if they're gonna keep you. And uh, apparently, uh, this guy uh, didn't want us. It, it's weird uh, in radio. It's the strangest thing when yeah, like a new PD comes in for some reason they can't work with the old people at the station. They have to yeah. like completely clean house and bring in their own people, which I, I just never understood. Yeah. Because why not embrace the show that's doing pretty well on that station and, and try to make it even better? Because there, maybe that's your job is to try to now make it even better and get it get it back to where it was when we were doing afternoons uh, for YSP back in the day. But this guy was just a, a complete, just a complete dude. In all my years in radio, I mean, he's right there with this Dave Douglas from our old uh, station, AAF in Boston. Ugh. He is right there with Dave Douglas, just a wussy boy, not a not a man, will look you in the eye and tell you something that is just flat out not true, and then and then goes and hides after he tells you, you know, that uh, that uh, he's looking forward to working working with you, and uh, you know, flipping the station back to rock is going to be great for 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 the station, great for you guys, and we can't wait to have you guys down here. I mean, they actually drove to New York and sat across from a table, and that, and I'm sitting here going, well, what changed between that and a mere three days later? Yeah, what the f could have a- happened? He just didn't like the show, and he's a megalomaniac and a douche. All right, if you didn't like the show, then you know what? Then have some weird excuse why he couldn't make the trip to New York, or don't come to New York at all. Something yeah. happened where he just didn't like it. Something happened, and I would love to know what. My comment, I'm sure, family, didn't help. Family values. Family values. I just, uh, well, I, 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 don't know how you, I, don't, I don't know how you get rid of a top-rated show. I just don't know how you do that. We try to keep it... I mean? I'll be honest. Uh, Tim, I'll be honest. Uh, we do try to keep it honest uh, on this show. We weren't a top-rated show, but we weren't... 
we weren't stuck into a point where we should have been thrown off the air, okay? I mean, the fact remains, because they will report it differently in the paper, the last ratings period that was important, we were fourth place men, 18 to 49. That's why we do this radio show, to talk to, sorry to the ladies. I mean, we want them too, obviously. But in general, we really want to do very well men, 18 to 49. We were okay. We were right mm-hmm. We were right there. And actually, the last few trends, we were kind of trending up. So it looked like uh, the show was moving in the right direction. Men, 18 to 34, which is pretty important too, we were in third place. All right, we weren't like setting the the Philly ratings on fire. I mean, Preston and Steve had a big lead, but we were doing okay, and we were looking forward to the next uh, growth period. Right. You know, it's it doesn't make sense, and and you know, time will time will prove my point. Time will prove yeah. my point. You know, oh, we're yeah, not going to forget sure. about this anytime soon. We still think no. of uh, Dave Douglas and that that douche, <laughs> that douche that had no you know what. Well, hopefully I'll catch you guys on XM, and this is why terrestrial radio is things isn't going to go anywhere, uh, you know? All right. And, uh, uh, hey, Jimmy, I saw your show. I think it was on HBO. I didn't notice, but it was like an Thank hour you. show, and uh, oh, you were great. Thank you, you were, so awesome. Much, you were awesome. It was on HBO, yes. By the way, just a quick thing. We've been plugging the Monster in DVDs, which are on, in stores. A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people have told me they're having trouble finding them. I I I don't I think they're supposed to be in Best Buy. They're in Fye. I just don't know what stores they're in. Um, I know Walmart turned us down, which we knew they would, and one more. But they're in Virgin, so try to find them there. But yeah. I got a lot of complaints in Connecticut, so All right. my apologies. Hey, uh, Tim, you know we're gonna try to get back on in Philly, and I, I announced earlier, and I I got to get it to Dan Gross from the Philadelphia Inquirer. I am more than willing to work for free in uh, Philadelphia. More than willing to prove that it's not about money and that it's about passion and believing in the show and knowing we can do a good job down there. So well, we're, we're going to do everything we crossed. can. And, and we uh, what? I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It, all right, Tim. Thank you. Let's go to Michael in uh, South Jersey. Michael, what's up? Hey, man. I must. I feel. I must know what it feels like to how the Baltimore fans felt when they woke up and the Colts were gone <laughs> that morning. That was one of the most amazing things that ever happened in sports. I mean, it is right up there. One one morning, yeah, Baltimore woke up and realized that in the middle of the night, they had moving vans moving the team yeah. out of Baltimore. No one had a clue. You guys are like the Eagles to me, man. I feel the same way if the Eagles jumped up and moved, man. But see, here's the difference. We didn't want to move. We were we were kicked out, uh, kicked out in, in in such a bad way. I I, I hope I have uh, communicated that. Yeah, but the, the Baltimore thing was amazing. They were able to pack that whole stadium overnight. <laughs> the, I mean, the logos and everything were gone off the stadium, man. They just they hauled ass in the middle of the night. Right. I know what they feel like now, man. All right, Michael. I can't, I can't believe I woke up. You guys were gone. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think more and more people are uh, realizing that because now they're just lit again. Let's go to Mike in Philly. Hey. Hey. I just want to say my buddy listens to you guys all the time, and all I hear from him all the time is how you bash Preston and Steve all the time. And uh, I just want you guys to say how how we beat you guys. Yeah, no, we we open the air. We what? We're we're number one, and we got y'all kicked off the air. Now, first of all, we didn't bash oh. Preston and Steve all the time. We did take our shots, and and good for you. There's a lot of people listening to Preston and Steve. We honestly think that it's a sucky show. What can I tell you? Oh, what sucks about it? Does it suck because they? <laughs> I hate you, Mike, more than anything. I, I gotta like Mike. I hate you. Oh, does it my suck because they frunk us? <laughs> Let me think that over for a while. For those of you that keep asking me what fruncus means, it is from the Latin root meaning to frunk. <laughs> to frunk. Yes. It's F R U N. K with a silent C H E at the end, and those two <laughs> stupid dots over one of the letters. <laughs> stupid dots. What are those things called? The Germans can't get enough of them. Humlot. Wow. What is it called? Umlaut. How do you Umlaut. know? Are you a linguist? Yes. He's a cunning <laughs> linguist. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, uh, the Philly situation has really shut down the phones today. No one could get through to do wake up your spouse. Or any of the other fine things we do with this uh, radio show on a Wednesday. It is Whip Em Out Wednesday, but uh, it's all Philly calls. Yeah. Passionate Philly listeners pissed yep. off today. There you go. Well, maybe you can just tune on YSP and listen to some uh, some Chili Peppers that well, you're not listening to on your iPod because you're bored of it. <laughs> 
Well, no, Enjoy. <laughs> well, no, Jimmy. Uh, recently, instead of uh, having us on, they played U2 Pride in the name of love. Uh huh. I'm a big U2 fan, so that's, that's tough to tough to handle that one. Uh, Nirvana. I'm a huge Nirvana fan. They played Lithium today. Foo Fighters. Times like these. Lincoln Park Crawling, which is cool. And then Ozzy Osbourne. Mom, I'm coming home. He's only playing Ozzy because he's expecting me to now speak highly of the Oh, uh, right. Right. True. I'm not that shallow. Right. Ozzy can fall into a ditch filled with feces. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, M apples? <laughs> Stupid Ata face. What are you thinking that? <laughs> you do look like him. Sorry. He didn't like your joke. I know he didn't. And I, I hated his faggoty corporate smile. His little fruity corporate smile when he went, uh, hey, you couldn't come up with a better one than that? Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't be passive aggressive. That's a woman's quality. That was a good one. You come up with one. That meant that he was very bothered by the. Oh, of course he was. Very bothered. And funny people hate being teased. And we're talking about John Cook, whistle yes. boy. That's now in charge of YSP. He knows what he's doing. You know, instead of uh, listening to this show, it's 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 uh, it's tunes that you've heard a million times, yeah. a million effing times. <sighs> like I try to get into people's heads sometimes. I'm like, all right, I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right. How how would you even think that playing this crap is better than what we're doing? Seriously, yeah, we're not on every day, but but our average is pretty up there. Like, is someone really just like, oh god, mom, I'm coming home. I haven't heard this song in at least ten minutes. I gotta crank it up. I gotta crank this one up. Yeah, I just don't get it. He didn't like the fact. I guarantee this is a personality thing, um, because he also didn't like the fact, and this is that that it was pointed out how sloppy the format change was done. That oh, was right. Handled. No fault of Kid Chris's. I mean, that wasn't Chris's fault. I didn't say that on the air. We we, we did. We we said it because it was we did? true. It was, weirdly, it was weirdly done. I was... Can I, uh, can I just jump in here, Jimmy? All right. All right. It should be brought up. Yeah. I was very, very bothered when we were part of that uh, format s switch, and I knew something was like... Like, I, I kind of... I, I felt like the guy really didn't know what he was doing. I really did. They promoted like all day or for maybe maybe more than a day that there was going to be a huge announcement on Kid Chris's show at 5 o'clock on mm -hmm. YSP. Right, and right. And everyone knew that that meant probably The Rock is coming back. But they were going to officially announce that. And they wanted Ant and I and Jimmy there. And we came in and we uh, hung out with uh, Kid Chris. And, you know, we had a good time with him, whatever. And then all of a sudden, I see a camera guy in there. And there's a banner on the wall that's like a plastic banner that is not even put on the wall straight. It's kind of sideways, and it's the old logo, the Free FM logo. And it was tiny. It was tiny. It was that was the only uh, idea you had that this station was changing formats, and it was just us in the studio. And there was a camera guy in there. I'm like, wow. And I'm thinking as a radio guy, I'm like, what a great opportunity. You're gonna you're gonna flip formats, and you can, this is going to be on the news. They have a good connection with Fox down there. And the banner is just kind of askew, just kind of hanging. They had to try to keep taping it. Remember <laughs> the scotch falling. tape? It kept falling. <laughs> it kept falling and showing the new logo. And the camera guy's even like, uh, all right, well, maybe I can make something this out of it. This is the big reveal. And then the big reveal, they pulled the banner, and then there's the new logo. And I'm like, wow, it just should have been much more exciting than this. A lot bigger. And, and then uh, uh, Kid Chris made the announcement, and then they played this like long production piece, you know, talking about how The Rock is back. And then I'm thinking to myself, what a great opportunity. You got a huge um, amount of people listening right now. You should hang and have a party atmosphere for at least a half hour to an hour. Like, wow, it's back and, you know, MMR's in trouble and we're going to be playing rock and we got the attitude back and we're so excited. Maybe maybe beers and champagne, maybe a little party. And it was it, that was it. All of a sudden, Kid Chris plays the first song and John Cook, as John Cook goes, all right, cool, thanks, guys. And that yeah. was it. And we walked out awkwardly like... Wow, this is the first day of this. And I thought to myself, they're in trouble. And I immediately, because then we went to um, the steak joint, I think, or that was the next day, whatever. I immediately called corporate. I'm like, I'm really bothered with the situation down here. I'm really bothered. He it was handled badly. And we, we teased him on the air. I know you said something, but it wasn't yep. horrible what you said. It was just pointed out. It was sloppily done. It was poorly done. And the bottom line is, again, a guy, an, an unfunny corporate men's room tapper. Which is what he is. He's a men's room tapper. Um, he brings his own empty shopping bags into every men's room just in case. Uh, cannot handle being criticized or teased yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, a big part of the problem. And that was the issue I had with YSP when we went back to them is that the lack of passion as far as a radio station goes. I'm like, wow, there is like no passion in this place. And there was like Karen Buck and she finally gave up. I don't know what her issue was, but I, I feel like she gave up. And, uh, and she had no choice. She just had it.
Like, because mm-hmm. she, she was still trying to do the rah rah, I know what this place could be. And it was just like, it was nothing. Yeah. You know, and this was stuff I was saying, you know, behind the scenes of corporate. Like, I'm really bothered. Like, they're, they seem really lost down there. And if this format flip and how they did it is any indication, I don't really see how they're going to turn this thing around anytime soon. It, turn this thing around. It would have been cooler if they just had somebody say, The Rock is back, and they went, ta da. <laughs> It was horrible, and anyway, again, it was no wasn't Chris's fault. He just I'm not even I'm no, not even know. trashing him. No, I'm not, you know, I don't no. know where I don't know what he's all about because people are like, oh, you're gonna start trashing him. I don't really know what he's about. He's been able to play it perfectly where he's friends with us and Howard, which is amazing. But uh, whatever, you know, we'll see what his true colors are as this uh, moves forward. But I don't I don't have an issue with the guy as I sit here today. No, he never was... like trashed uh, trashed us uh, that I know of. No. But the banner then curled up, and then the Fox guy is like, uh, "Can someone like string that out?" So it, it, the, the the camera guy's even like, "Can someone string that out?" I'm trying to get a good shot of this for you know TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, they're playing dirty deeds done dirt cheap. I, I like ACD. I happen yeah. to like Bond Scott a lot, and let's mm. hope that John it's- Cook winds up the same way he did, choking on his own vomit in a chilly car. Ha <laughs> 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 Guess who you look like? <laughs> And now it's Beck. Now it's Beck loser. I uh, guess we're the losers, so yeah. maybe they uh, could dedicate that to us today. Attack. What? Oh, we got a break? Okay. Phones are still lit about the Philly situation. We'll uh, move on from that in the very near future. Don't worry. Get Once again, for the faithful listeners, thanks for uh, hanging in there today. Just, uh, it's, it's a major distraction. What can I tell you? We got uh, Dan Gross from the Philadelphia Inquirer on the line here. Dan, yo, what's going on, buddy? Not too much. Uh, sorry to hear about your uh, your situation down here. Thank you. Yeah, we're not happy about it. That's for sure. Yeah, that's what I was. That's why I called uh, Steve yesterday. I was hoping that you know, if if you guys were pissed, you would be happy to tell me, so I could have uh, worked it into my story today. So, I mean, did that sort of take you off guard? Uh, we we had a feeling it was coming, even though no one was talking to us down there anymore. I mean, right. I, I mean. I, I hopefully you've been listening to the show, but basically, um, uh, David, the GM, mm-hmm. and uh, John Cook, the new PD, they came up to New York to tell us they were going to flip to uh, back to the you know to the Rock at YSP, okay. and they wanted us to be a big part of it. And they were showing us new logos, and they came to New York just to tell us before they told anybody else, and they were excited to work with us. And John Cook's like, I'm a big fan, and I'm friends with Tim Sabian. I've heard a lot of great things about you guys, and I can't wait to work for you. And it, it was, all right, this is really cool. We're, we're pumped. And then we went down there a mere few days later. We broadcast it live. Uh, the reaction was amazing. We did our comedy show. There was uh, close to 10,000 people in Camden. And then we signed autographs for two hours. I'm like, wow, really feeling good about this whole Philly thing. And finally, I think we have a, a real good chance to make uh, the ratings pop in Philly because we really believe that us anchoring a rock station could work. Right. And then we go back to New York, and uh, we never heard from the guy again. And it, it's it's got to be pointed out that he made it perfectly clear when he was face-to-face with us. He's like, I'm going to bother you guys on a daily basis about what's going on in Philly. So, uh, so you know, you could bring some of the Philly stuff to your syndicated radio show. And I'm in, like, in a good way. He was going to yeah, yeah. Uh, supply us with information so we can make... Make, uh, make sure we're on top of the top stories and yeah. this and that. And I'm like, that's great. That's exactly what we, we look for in a PD. We want to be in touch with the PDs and we want them feeding us info. And then it's up to us to filter it and try to you know, make it interesting for the rest of the country. That's what you do with a syndicated show. And then we come back to New York and we never hear from the guy again. And we start bitching and complaining on the air, off the air. I was calling corporate. I'm like, what the F is going on? Why won't this guy you know, talk to us? And obviously, uh, they somewhere between this great meeting in New York and coming back from our visit, they uh, they decided to go in another direction. But they they weren't men enough to you know let us in on this whole thing. Yeah, uh, it, did, it did seem bizarre because you know it was. I, I mean, I had reported. I guess I think it was September twentieth that this rumor was out there that they were going to drop you guys in the fall or in the spring and bring uh, Chris to morning, but that was like just after you guys left town and you had the big successful show and everything. And, yeah. And Dan, let's be honest, it's not a rumor. You got some really good connections, and when I saw you print that, I went right to corporate with this. Right to corporate. I was like, what is going on? And why isn't this guy calling us back? And no and one... didn't give you a straight answer? No. No, absolutely not. So then we started obviously trashing him, going, what is, what is up with this guy, this John Cook? And I called him a wussy boy, and uh, we went off yesterday. 
and then uh, they obviously took us off the air. And then we found out yesterday that uh, um, you know that they were done with us. But the funny thing is, then corporate admitted to me that uh, well, they were going to take you off in ten to ten days to two weeks. So I kind of okay, beat them so to the punch. Is is all? So do you, you think you sped it up by calling them names and stuff on air? Oh yeah, it was told to me. But what what's the difference? Right. I'm not. You know, what's the difference? If if you don't want the show, then why continue? You know, get rid of us immediately. You know, it's a big insult to us. I think that's that's what they did. You know, it, that's what they did here when when I had reported that the station was about to flip, and then basically every host was starting to worry whether they were going to get fired, and the station couldn't take the. Uh, having to try and lie to everyone, so they just moved it up right. a couple mm. days ahead of schedule. Your radio secrets don't uh, last very long, that's for sure. Not really. And and we started trending uh, you know, better in recent months. I, I mean, and we're pretty honest with the show. Press and Steve were still kicking our ass. But we, we were showing some uh, some pretty good improvements. You know, some of the radio uh, sites are saying we were absolutely awful in the ratings in, in Philly. That's not true. We... The latest book, we were uh, fourth men, 18 to 49, and that's the reason we do this radio show. You want to be really good with the men. So we were almost there, and and men, 18 to 34, we were in third place. That's not the type of show you just you know throw out with the morning garbage. Right. You just don't. Well, I think that, you know, I mean, there had been rumors before Chris even came to town that he was, you know, coming in to be the uh, the morning guy, you know, once the... Uh once Stern left the air, and then, of course, somebody at CBS decided to go with David Lee Roth, uh, which was obviously <laughs> a horrible mistake. Well, um, I, I wish him luck, but I think the station is in just an awful, awful place, and we have been saying that. It's it's not us now saying it because we're not part of it. You know, I, I kind of bitched to corporate about it going, look, I'm really concerned about, you know, YSP and what they're doing down there. There's a lack of uh, passion, and there's there doesn't seem to be a guy at the helm that really knows what they're doing. Well, the weird thing, I think, is now, you know, Chris is the only actual person, like the actual host that they have. And then the rest of the day, they're playing, like, you know, weird uh, alternative rock songs from, like, 1998 hmm. that, like, people have heard 7,000 times. Like, wow. oh, great, Stone Temple Pilots are on. I'm going to keep this on, you know? Right. Well, yeah, good luck uh, Good luck to you, but I, I don't see it happening, you know? And, and it was told to me yesterday that they've decided to uh, cancel the Opie and Anthony show, and they're going to roll the dice. That's what you want to hear. That they don't even have a really good plan in place, but they they're willing to roll the dice with something different. You watch the the stupid answer he gives you when you talk to him about it too. He'll go, ah, just you know, different direction. You know, he'll just give you some pukey, non-committal answer. Yeah, I, John, yeah, I mean that's that's usually what you get from from radio people. Well, John Cook is a wussy boy, and then uh, now he's claiming that he did try to call me an aunt a few uh, what a couple weeks ago, aunt, and it, yeah. it's just a flat out lie. Never and, got, never got what, a call. And that's what wussy boys do. Now they'll just lie to try to save face and and kind of try to show, you know, people that you might be a man after all. Do you um? Do you guys think you're gonna try and get something else in Philly, or I guess is that like a CBS deal because you're running out of CBS stations? Uh, no, I, absolutely. Uh, I said it earlier this morning because a lot of people thought we went back to commercial radio uh, for the money, and I want to prove that I, we went back to radio, uh, commercial radio, because we wanted more people to hear what we do. And it's it's not always about the money. So I, I announced it this morning, and, I, and I'm going to stick to this. You can print this. I will work for free in Philly to prove that I'm doing it for for the for the passion of the whole thing. I don't I don't need money to be heard in Philly. I will work for another station for free. So That's how much I believe in this show and how much I believe in the Philly market. And I don't want any, you know, uh, any uh, uh, owner down there going, oh, I, I kind of like these guys, but they're a little bit expensive for my taste. So let's get that right out of the way. My salary, free. Free. So any, any Philly station that wants you guys can call today, and you'll, you'll entertain the notion of working for them for nothing. I, Opie, say today that I will work for free on the, uh, 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 on the Philly airway. I'll do it for like 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, how about Norton? How much does he want? Uh, I, I take the remainder of their salaries and I add it to mine, and I divvy it up as I see fit. I <laughs> ten bucks. Anthony's just taking what I already make. <laughs> I want to. I will work for free to prove a point that I'm doing it because I really believe in the show. I believe in uh, Philadelphia, and I, I want to make it work. And I want to. I want to show uh, Philly that we can be, you know, Preston and Steve if we have the right people behind us pushing the show. Absolutely. Cool. Well, hopefully somebody will take you up on this. There you go. All right, Dan. All right. Thanks, guys. Take it easy, man. Later on. Dan Gross from the Philadelphia Inquirer. <laughs> Tomorrow we won't talk about this as much, I promise. Thanks for hanging in there today.
Yeah. Hello, Phil. Oh. <laughs> and then someone's trying to guess the sound. Well, Kevin from Connecticut, a faithful listener. He writes, that was a Japanese radio show angry about losing the Kobe affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> we have one more today. <laughs> Holy shit, Jason C. from Georgia. Wow. The stupid, you get the, the, you get the award of being the stupidest listener today. Wow, good, good for you. Jason C. from Georgia, he writes, fuck, do a TV show already. And then he continues, he goes, this is why you're not on in Philly, barely describing anything. The whole bit is not to describe this, you idiot. Oh Let your imagination God. run wild, and then then you tell everybody what it is. Oh my God, you're an <laughs> idiot! You are the stupidest listener today, October twenty fourth, two thousand seven. Congrats! <laughs> What's the name? Jason C from Georgia. Congrats! A dummy. I want to say hi to everyone that uh, showed up today. A nice little crowd <laughs> on the bleachers on this fine rainy day. Yes. What's up, buddy? Buddy boys and girlies. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, <clears throat> four guys and two lovely gals. And uh, one of the guys who uh, had a great idea, he had a YSP shirt, and he goes, you want to take a shit on this? <laughs> and I really, I really do. But I, I haven't shit in like a day and a half, and it would be a fucking, a lava smoothie shit. <laughs> but a I don't masterpiece. Have, I, I don't have to shit right now, it's unfortunately. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, fans out there with their YSP crap, and they'll be making some fun videos that, that will make it their way to uh, YouTube and Break.com. That's, uh, that's what will happen. You bet it will. Uh, Sean, what's going on? Yellow. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey Sean, man. how are you, buddy? Hey, what's up, guys? Um... Just got in my car after work, popped on YSP, and they're playing music. What's up? Are you kidding? What do you mean? Uh, that must be a technical music. glitch. Uh, they uh, they decided to go in another direction, and our uh, our fans are just outraged. And I think the big protest is today that's going to shut down the city of Philly. <laughs> yeah. They've been planning for the last uh, 24 hours. It should be just an unbelievable display of outrage today in Philadelphia. Or, and where? or no one's going to do anything, because yeah. that's how it works in radio. Your favorite show gets kicked off the radio, and there's nothing you could do about it. They Great. Went another direction, and we flew out the door. <laughs> yeah. Quick they turned quickly. You. Huh? Quick question for you. If I get X7, can I listen to this side, too? Yeah. Yeah, this side oh, okay. is broadcast, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you can get the whole show, then. That's just what I'll do, then. Screw them. Absolutely. Lots the language, sir. Yeah. Yeah, screw them. Whoa, that's a little harsh. <laughs> I just wanted to be radio friendly, boys. You can also listen to us online there, sir. There's a bunch of the radio stations we're still on. They they stream the show uh, live online. All right? Cool. I'll go to Circuit City today, my man. All right. Thank you, Sean. Have a good we'll one. just move to New York. Hang in there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just move to New York. Yeah, the outrage of Philly is just out of control. Woo! <laughs> now, people really are pissed, but the problem is you don't know what to do about it. No. In the end, you There's just nothing. don't know what to do. There's nothing. But I appreciate the deal. people that are uh, upset and calling the station and um, at least expressing themselves. That's that's good. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. That's making someone's uh, day miserable, and I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Yes. Anytime you can make someone's day miserable, I, Opie, am happy. Especially when it's on the behalf of the show. Yes, of course. Steve, Philly, what's up? Yo, hey, Owen. Hey, man. Hey. hey. I, I, I can't stand this friggin' city, man. They, they, they took you guys off the air, and this President Steve, they suck. They completely suck. I hope you guys come back somewhere in Philly. Well, I, I hope, uh, well, see, I'm, we're not even talking to our audience down there that is pissed off because the ones that were, uh, are, uh, whatever, they're, Philly people are still listening to the show in other ways, but I wish I could talk to the people. Like, they are really pissed, and they don't know what to do about it. I'd love to have Start the Philly calling... people involved in the gun conversation. They <laughs> like their guns over there, oh, too. Oh, boy, do they. Philadelphia. they were calling it. Yeah, the murder rate down they there is... They call it Philadelphia. Ridiculous. But, uh, Steve, I... I... I don't know. It's time to start calling the other stations down there. We uh, we uh, will do everything we can to get back on the air in Philly sooner than later. Uh, but uh, Bob's too busy, uh, you know, negotiating uh, our negotiating the deal for our replacement uh, down there. So I guess oh. I guess when he's done with that, then he'll figure out what uh, what we could do with the Philly situation. So, all right, man. All right, Thanks. Steve. Thank you. Which just amazes me. But what are you going to do? If I start thinking about that stuff, I'll go nuts.
Uh, all right. Well, there's, I mean, there's there's just tons of Philly calls coming in every day. We were doing well, too, today. That just infuriates me. It, that situation is driving me nuts when I'm not here. Just driving me nuts. And that's why I don't have a gun. <laughs> See? Thank Bring it back to the gun thing. Thank God. Some people are... Some people are uh, responsible enough that they could to handle, know they could handle a gun in their life. It's like I a recovering can't. alcoholic knows, right? Can't have one drink, right? Right. Uh, right. So, so uh, somebody with a, a gun problem shouldn't have guns. My uh, my lovely fiance <laughs> has been babysitting me uh, the last couple of days. Really? You know how many times I've heard, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Jesus. As I'm picking up things, and I just want to throw them. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times in the last couple of days I heard, no, 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 no. And then it snaps oh, me out. I'd be God. like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, calm down. Oh, All right. Geez. All right, take a deep breath. So oh, I guess I, I wouldn't do well with a gun in my um, house. <laughs> no. I, I only hear, no, 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 no. When things are going on in the bedroom and she's on her stomach. <laughs> I'm like, come on. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I will have our day in Philly to to prove uh, a lot of things, a lot of things. Yeah. Wow. We'll just... I am uh, doing some heavy breathing right now. All right. Just. <sighs> we gotta leave these things at the studio door. Why you don't think that uh the, that if like Howard got taken off the market, Buck Walter would be negotiating for the replacement? Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for uh, getting it. Thank you. Our agent is negotiating the deal for our replacement, and he thinks there's no problem with that. If I could play the devil's advocate, it is his client. Well, he. I don't know what he was. What was he supposed to do? Say, um, I can't represent you. Yeah. Really? I would. Just drop him as a client. Yeah. I don't want to be one of many in a stable of uh, clients. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, wow, this wow. is a little t too tough. Uh, Opie and Anthony have made me a bloody fortune in the last 10 years. And because of Opie, don't get me started, really, because this is going to get ugly. <sighs> Opie and Anthony uh, have also turned a lot of uh, a lot of clients onto, onto Mr. Uh, Eatman over the years because of our success. Yeah, I would absolutely say, "Wow, this is this is a rough one, man. These guys have made me a bloody fortune." Absolutely, I would. I would. I would step away from this one. Absolutely, he doesn't need all those clients. We make him a bloody effing fortune, and if he focused just on our our careers, he would make even more money instead of dealing with uh, you know s smaller shows all over the country. Don't get me started. Seriously, it's infuriating. I. Th we got kicked off in Philly. And I think you're started already. I know. I know. I know. And I'm trying to be better. Trust me. But it's enraging. We should never have been kicked off of Philly. And now I, we got to sit back and watch him negotiate the deal for our replacement. That's insane. That is insane in my world. Insane. It's insane. And the best he could tell me is, well, someone was going to do the deal. Oh, great. That's that's the answer I want after 10 years of uh, making you a bloody fortune. For what? I don't even know. I really don't know. Because when the going gets tough, he sure isn't around. Well, he's a His advice is like, oh, okay, you guys got to get the ratings up in Philly. That's the best he could tell us when things are going weird. Oh, God, you got to get the ratings up in Philly. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I'm gonna actually have to work if you don't do that. He's an I'm agent. Try to figure something out. He's an agent. Oh, he negotiates deals and then and then gets a lot you of money a... to sit back and watch things just kind of get a little weird. If if we got a like a manager, well, that's... then I could see. Well, that... a manager would do like something like that. An agent, well, an agent contractually, all he is supposed to do is. Well, like but, but Bob wanted to do more than just that, but he hasn't. Okay, trust me, the manager thing is is going to happen now because I, I you can't sit back and watch this crap happen. You know who's watching out for our best interest? He's not. You're not watching out for our best interest when when you watch the Philly thing happen and then you negotiate the deal with the guy that's going to replace uh, Opie and Anthony. That's not watching out for my best interest. I, I deserve a little more with the money we pay him. A lot more. Hey, Halloween tips. Uh, Halloween right around the corner. <laughs> Less than a week away, right? Down to five or six days. We'll have to agree to disagree, man, but 
Who's disagreeing? No, and and sees another way. And I I just see things a little differently as far as the situation goes. It happens. It, where it, it's 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 an insult. You know? I'm in the middle. Like you're both correct. He is an agent. That is technically his job. I mean, honestly, it is. However, it would it would it, it does. It's an like insult. Instead of, instead of trying to get a new gig. The concentrate on this, but then again, it is kind of his life. It's it, there's no one's wrong with it. It's like both points are very right. He's completely wrong. I haven't heard from him in over a day. Like, what is he doing about the Philly situation? Is he contacting the other stations? What is he doing? Seriously, what is he doing? But he doesn't have time because he's negotiating the deal for a replacement. That's insane to me. It, I'm sorry, it's insane to me. I talked and to him just, last night, and he uh, he has spoken with a few people in Philly. Oh, well, but they, um, I get to find out live in the air. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he's doing his job, right? That's a guy doing his job, right? I find out from Anthony live on the air that uh, he has spoken to people down he there. He said you hung up on him. Yeah, and I will continue <laughs> hanging up. Well, that's probably why he so, didn't know So send me an email. Send me an email. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did hang up on him, and I will continue. He, he's gotten 10% of my money for a long time. The, when the going gets tough, this is where he has to finally work. He hasn't worked in a long time, except for negotiating a deal every once in a while. And guess what? Guess what, Ant? The, re the reason his job's so easy is because we have an effing great show. It's oh, I know like that. A, it's not like uh, you know he's uh, he's pulling a magic act here. We're a commodity. People want this radio show. It makes his job so effing easy. So all I ask is when the going gets tough, he shows something, and he shows nothing. And and I'm I'm so sick of like you know being disrespected by people. Like he's showing that we're just one of many in his stable. That's not what I uh, signed on for when we uh, got him as an agent. So he's talked to people? That's good to know. Well, he's talked to um, people that, you know. All right, just people. We've, yeah. We, that we've had dealings with before. All right. They hate us, though. Um, no, no. We're still beloved. <laughs> Is there a, uh, a peak of interest? Um... Well, I'll discuss that part off the air. <laughs> and by the way, um, we're going urban. And by the way, <laughs> just to make a point and to show pretty much the world I'm insane, I, I am working for Free and Philly, and, and Bob gets 10% of zero. And that's where it's going to hurt him. That's the way it is with my deal. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> 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 That I, I will take. I, I will. I will get great happiness in that. I will. I'm working for free when we get back to Philadelphia radio. If they want to pay after we become number one or negotiate that, whatever, fine. But I want to work for free in Philadelphia radio. I don't need the money, and I want to see Bob take ten percent of zero, and then I will finally be happy, and then we can maybe start working together again. But I'm working for free. And people think, well, Opie, uh, Opie's working for free down in Philly because they have to pay him out. No, I'm working for free as we move forward. Stop trying to spin my crap, okay? <laughs> my crap is very easy. Just listen with your stupid ears and stop spinning my, my crap on message boards. I want to work for free in Philly radio. That's what I want to do, to show that I still have the passion for this. Don't spin it. Well, the reason is, really, are you in my life? Are you, are you, am I calling you at home? No. My crap is my crap. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, my crap is my crap. <laughs> right. Right. When I say something, that's it. Don't spin it. That's it. I don't even know if uh, we get paid to the end of the contract. I really don't. I don't care. I want to work in Philly radio for free, and I want to sit back and watch... Uh, Bob Eatman get uh, 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 an aneurysm because he realized he's making 10% of zero. And then everyone could whisper behind my back that I'm insane. Great. I don't care. That's what I do now because I'm infuriated with that situation. The other stations we lost, I told Tom yesterday and other people in corporate, I get it. I understand how this business works. But the mm -hmm. Philly situation is so ridiculous. I want to be on the radio by Monday. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait until Bob... You know, negotiates the deal for our replacement and then gets back to us. I want it to happen now. And I want to do it for free. For free. 10% of zero. Enjoy that one, Bob. <laughs> you know, someone brings up a good point on... Uh, Impossible. They have the wrong show. His name is Philly Fan. He writes, you guys work for a bunch of dummies. 
Uh, I'm just reading this one, uh, Eric Logan. Sorry. If XM uh, if XM had any brains, they'd be campaigning big time down in Philly. I agree with the uh, Philly fan. And I I'm fucking a- said that to him, and in, 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 I called Elo and said, "Why don't we put a banner, uh, a billboard up in Philadelphia? Put one up in uh, possibly Detroit, but or, or Pittsburgh. We did have nice listeners in Pittsburgh. Why not? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there's enough there to pay for that billboard. Definitely in Philly, it should be. Hey, Philly, no brainer. Opie and Anthony are still on the radio, and then a big XM logo. It's a no fucking brainer. No <clears> brainer. <throat> the, every other radio station down there has, uh, or radio show has banners as you're heading into the city. It would be a, a no brainer. Uh, Philly fan, you're absolutely correct. Uh, well, if it's a no brainer, we're just the guys to do it. <laughs> and then he writes, but no. Did he put the there a, a bunch, bunch of, of idiots? Yeah, and okay. then he goes, "They're a bunch of idiots. They won't do it." And I would love to quote Elo and say, "Why would we? Why would we?" Does he have any plans for Philly? We had a go there and drink. We had a we had a pretty big audience in Philly, and that I would think, be a no is brainer. He drunk? Oh, huh? well, no, I, I don't think he's drinking as much these days. <laughs> No? No, I don't think he's drinking that much these days. Why? He lost 20 pounds. He's doing Pilates. <laughs> Is Elo doing Pilates? Yeah. Oh, what a fag. He's doing girl exercises. Yeah. Like it, you can almost get away with... Is he in a spinning class? <laughs> you can almost get away with saying that you do yoga. A guy. Yeah, yeah. Almost. I'm saying almost. Yeah. It's still like uh, yoga. But Pilates... Yeah. That's like a, a girl's exercise. That's like doing jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of uh at the end of my uh session at the gym, the cool down period is Pilates. Is a, no, it's a, a like a yoga thing. Yeah. And it, it works very well with stretching and uh getting your heart rate back down. Mm-hmm. It's nice, relaxing. Then you leave feeling all like <sighs> So that I can understand, but Pilates. Pilates, yeah. The girls talk about doing Pilates. Jimmy's chick does Pilates, right, Jimmy? She does, yes. And uh, that's why she has a nice figure. She hasn't done that in a while, though. She's been very lazy. girl doesn't have to do anything. It's really weird how she keeps her figure. Um, I told her, look, I try to be gentle. Girlish figure. But I'm like, look, could you keep doing Pilates so I'm going to stop fucking you? (laughs) (laughs) So you were gentle about it, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was all right. And she goes, by the way, if that fucking noodle you call a cock disappoints me one more time, I'm bringing home a darker one. And we laughed and hugged. <laughs> and smooched? Yeah, we we'll smooch. A little smooch. You're good at smooching. Yeah. All right. You guys will sneak a smooch. Yeah, a little smooch a mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's right. say hi to Jennifer in Jersey. Jennifer. <laughs> hey. Hey. Ugh. How are you guys doing? Good, great. Uh, Anthony hates your name if uh, you haven't figured that out yet. Change your name, please. <laughs> I, I'm i really upset because you guys aren't on YSC this morning. You're just noticing? But, yeah, mm. I, well, I was out of work for like three days, so I'm probably missing something. Yeah, yeah. so are we. A job in Philly. <laughs> yeah, we're a bit, well, we're a bit sad. I think yeah, uh, I think oh I think if like the pest could rally something, we would go down there and at least say, "Hey, thanks, thanks for the memories." We should mm. get we should go down there and at least throw a uh, thanks a lot party. But yeah, we're uh, we're currently searching for a new home in Philly. There, Jennifer. Okay, well they can get rid of Preston and Steve and put you on ninety three. Oh yeah, well of course they're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's what I would do if I was world. running a radio station. Go to Cindy and. Uh, <laughs> In uh, in PA, Cindy. Hi. What's up, Cindy? Listen, I used to listen to you on ninety four point one WYSP, and the last week or so, you're not on that station anymore. Yeah. And I just wondered what happened. Oh boy, we went over it a lot, but uh, they they are stupid enough to think they need to go in another direction. So we're uh, actively looking for a new home in Philadelphia. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I've been listening to you since I lived in Brooklyn. Okay, I'll keep watching out for you. All right, thank you. you Thanks. Guys. You can still listen to us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, really. <laughs> All right, well, I, I guess... You that station, you're not there. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, All right. FYSP, Bye. F them. By the way, are we on in Chicago today? Because our days are numbered in Chicago. I at least want to be able to say goodbye to the uh, the audience we did have in Chicago. <laughs> 
<laughs> Once we get the boot, we can always call Steve Dahl, ask if he'll send a message. Hello. Yeah, there you go. Hello, well, it was Steve. reported that Steve Dahl is going to another station to do mornings, and the station we're being heard on, CKG, is uh, going to some kind of Spanish programming. Oh, really? So unless we... Uh, I caramba. I did six years of Spanish. Oh, really? Maybe if I brush up, maybe we, I, we could save this gig. <laughs> <laughs> El <Luck>. Shaco Jocko's. <laughs> That's they just took it from Lucille Ball. Right. That's Lucy Spanish. He's going to another station, huh? Uh yeah. Dahl is uh moving to another station and I guess this uh this station's going uh Spanish, so uh, I just want to say goodbye to everyone in Chicago before uh, yes. before it happens, because they never tell you when it does happen. No, nah, they don't. God forbid all, you can say goodbye to the audience. Yeah, all of a sudden you're just gone and they make believe you never existed. Yeah, but the, well. way, the people right now, that's six people that are not being considerate of. <laughs> <laughs> we got Moose Nose from Whack Bag. Moose Nose? On the line. Want to give uh, Whack Bag some props. They're actually uh, talking about the radio show. A like little more bag. lately. Thank you so much. Hey, Moose Nose, what's up? Yeah. Big... Hi, Moose Nose. Moose Nose. Hey. What's up, hey. buddy? How you doing? Not much. I'm sick. That's all. You guys are still out in Chicago so far. And as soon as I get to the job, the radios all go out on CKG. Well, yeah, cool. I do believe that um, today might be the announcement. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So if it is, Kaha uh, de tu madre. Thank you for effing on my dick. <laughs> you got to talk about one of the worst uh, baseball disasters ever. Yeah, do we? <laughs> What's that? Uh, the, des the disco demolition in 79. Oh, we've talked about that before. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's always fun. Thank you. <laughs> it's always fun, except this time. You're, okay. You know your cold medicine just ruined everything, right? Yeah. What you... That's what it's supposed to do. I was just going to say caja de tu madre to everybody in Chai Town. Ah. Did he say it first? Did this guy say something in Spanish? No, he just oh, babbled over. Babbling and babbling and He just babbled and over. Babbling. The, uh... Yeah, well, I like the guys who work at the station. They're very nice. They're Drew. They're all very supportive. And Drew Hayes, uh, yeah, uh, really rocks. good, good man. And Steve Dahl, thanks to everybody. Steve Dahl rocks. They uh, both uh, believed in the show and helped us uh, try to try to make something of ourselves in Chicago. Yeah. And Steve Dahl's producer, who I'd like to sleep with more than I'd like to breathe. What's his name? Bill. <laughs> wow, that old gag. Man. She's lovely. <laughs> Oh, I let her kick me around a room for an hour. She's wonderful. <laughs> I love how we just blurt the same stupid jokes out. A couple of bunch of moes in a room. What's the matter? <laughs> What's his name? Oh, it's a guy. I get it. And I, Bill. Can I have thought of a more creative name? <laughs> Bill. Hello, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Continued uh, success for Steve Dahl as he oh, yeah. uh, moves to another station. But um, I don't get it, man. I know the show is uh, way better than like a show like Eric and Kathy's, but I don't know, man. For some reason, they they like what they like out there. Whatever. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Whatever. Let's say hi to here on a daily basis and have fun. And then Tracy was waiting for me outside. She's like, if if, if that's true about Chicago changing formats and going Spanish, I hope you're not gonna spend the whole show tomorrow uh, uh, raging about that. I'm like. Do you understand the difference between the Philly situation and the Chicago situation? Are you the Philly situation and the Chicago situation? We need to really have a sit down with the. Uh, How did it come families? to this? I won't have it sold the children. That's an insomnia. And how about what Tracy worries about is them dumping out of yeah. the word Oriental. Go yell and like scream about them dumping out of sissies. Oriental yeah. and don't worry about how we handle us getting dropped from Chicago. And how about you worry about the fact that you want us to do a guy's talk show and meanwhile you fucking hand us dresses and cut our balls off and mm. say, here you go, sissies. I don't mind the dresses, but. Me neither. Ow. All the balls being cut off, but combine <laughs> them and it's shit. Bunch of cuckolds while dark men fuck Cuckold. our wives. We're just sitting there applauding. <laughs> <laughs> cuckolds. Stupid cuckolds. I, I hate that word. Cuckold. Oh, I love it. I, I it. love when Jimmy says it. Cuckold. That's just fucking mind boggling. Just some poor bastard sitting there shaking as his wife is just being pounded better than she ever could be by that poor slob. When unfunny people get mixed up and try to tell funny people how to be funny, it always fucking. Oh, wait a minute. It's unfunny people, people get mixed up with funny, with funny people. people telling. And try to tell funny people how to be funny it always stinks okay. 
No one funny is ever which, in charge. Which guy's the funny one? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> trying to figure out. Do you understand? It's never. There's never funny people in never. funny things, ever. Because they wouldn't be doing that if they were funny. No.